exclusive coverage of Bronkbuster football on 99.9 The Rock. Harley, good job on catching that football. You really took one for the team with that catch. Kind of like a and Marshall. No matter what is tossed away with vehicles that need fixed up, they always work as a team and get it done. Score for a and Body Shop. Hey, Harley, let's see if we can grab some after-game snacks. a and Body Shop, your shop in town. Home of the car liner, baby. The Keller Leopold story is one that's evolved over three generations of hard work and community partnerships. Long-standing relationships have been formed by the families they protected from tragedy and hardship. Share your story with Keller Leopold. Give them a chance to help you protect your family and your dreams. Keep your story alive for generations to come. Learn more at KellerLeopold.com. Things happen. Things happen. As a farmer or rancher, you know that agricultural land is not like other real estate. We know that too. Come see the experts in agriculture. American Ag Credit. Whether you're buying property, building, or making improvements, American Ag Credit is here to help with fixed rates, variable rates, long and short-term loans, unique solutions tailored to your unique needs. Visit us online at agloan.com. American Ag Credit, money for agriculture. United Wireless believes in delivering value to their customers and supporting our local communities. United continues to invest in their network, their people, and our communities here in Southwest Kansas. So when it's time to update your cell phone or get a new cell phone service, United Wireless would like the chance to earn your business. Switch to United Wireless today and join the United team in supporting Southwest Kansas. Find them online at unitedwireless.com. American Implement pregame show. TJ DeSalvo here alongside John Ford. Garden City Bronx Busters getting set to take on Arkansas Baptist here in the spring season opener at Bronx Buster Stadium in Garden City. Look around the Jayhawk Conference brought to you by the Crazy House. Butler and Indy facing off last night. Number seven Butler against number seven, uh, excuse me, number nine. Independence and it was 31 24 Independence with the victory. A big win for the Pirates over Butler and also Coffeyville and the number one team in the nation, Hutchinson, facing off last night. It was a 33 to 10 victory for the Hutchinson Dragons. So Hutch and Butler will be facing off next week in what will be a huge game uh, for at home for Butler. Today, it's Garden City and Arkansas Baptist. Also, Dodge City hosting RPA, Resolution Prep Academy. That's in Dodge City. Those are the only two games going on today in the conference. Then tomorrow, it's Fort Scott at Highland on a special Sunday edition of Jayhawk Conference football. Again, Garden City and Hutchinson picked to tie for first. That was a preseason coaches poll in the conference. Butler picked third, Independence fourth, Coffeyville fifth, Dodge City sixth, Fort Scott seventh, and Highland eighth. Look around the conference brought to you by the Crazy House in Garden City. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for your Garden City Bronx Busters. In head coach Tom Minnick's second season as the head coach, they were eight and three in 2019. Tom Minnick, 119 and 38 overall as a head coach. Been three championship games been a runner-up three times. 33 All-Americans for Tom Minnick, 15 NFL players for the head coach. As quarterback for Garden City, it's Devin Larson, a 6'4", 220-pound redshirt freshman from Gilbert, Arizona. He's a walk-on at Iowa State, picked Iowa State over Idaho. Now he's here at Garden City. Threw for over 7,000 yards and 75 touchdowns. He's 27-6 and as a starter in high school. He holds every passing record at his high school in Quinn Creek uh, High School in Arizona. And running back, jo uh, Jordan Ford, almost said John Ford. <laughs> I don't know if John Ford's gonna make it out there tonight. He's up here. Nope, <laughs> no way. <laughs> this is Jordan Ford, the running back for Garden City. 5'10", 180 pound sophomore from Chattanooga, Tennessee. He had 39 carries, 213 yards for Garden City. In 2019, scored twice. Uh, played behind 
three really good backs in Ramon Jefferson, Jaden Hayes, and Ellis Mayweather in 2019, if you remember. The other running back, Devion Hodges, 5'7", 185-pound redshirt freshman from Peril Stream, Illinois. Bryce Damas, the 6'2", 225-pound sophomore, is the tight end from Huntington, West Virginia. Cameron Labor, 5'10", 175-pound freshman from Norfolk, Virginia, is the slot receiver. Has interest from Louisiana Marshall, Montana State, North Carolina Central, and Virginia Tech. Jalen Williams, the other wide receiver, 6'6", 210-pound freshman out of Apopka, Florida. Uh, Three-star, according to Rivals, uh, visited Indiana earlier in the season. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll have the rest of the starting lineups for you. This is Blockbuster Football on 99.9 The Rock. Hi, this is Tony Wheel with Hydro Resources. Now is an excellent time for maintenance, repair, or changes to your water well and pumping system. Was your pump vibrating, pumping air, down in capacity, pumping some sand, or not efficient? Has it been several years since it was serviced? Have it worked on now during the off-season so you're ready for next spring? Don't wait. Call the professionals at Hydro Resources at 620-277-2389 to discuss your needs. Whether you want to completely renovate your building or just need to repair your damaged doors, Morton Buildings has you covered. Morton Buildings has over 115 years of experience in the construction industry, which means we have completed a wide variety of repairs. And get this, even if it's not a Morton Building, we are happy to provide repairs on any of your building's needs. Contact your local Morton office today at 620-275-4105. Back at Bronkbuster Stadium, we wrap up the American Indian Trail Show. Before we continue with the Hydro Resources starting lineup, we would take just a short intermission uh, for the Rock City Sports Broadcast. Uh, now we'll go through the offensive lineup for Morton City. Jerry Dominguez in his second season as a defensive coordinator for Garden City. Starting on that defensive line and defensive end, Raymond Cutts, 6'3", 270 pound redshirt freshman out of Orlando, Florida. The other defensive end is Arvell Ferguson, a 6'4", 220 pound sophomore out of St. Louis, Missouri. Defensive tackles, Eli Hill, 6'3", 295 pound sophomore out of Phoenix, Arizona. And Mae Siomalo, 6'3", 310 pound freshman out of Mauna Loa, Hawaii is the nose tackle. Your linebackers, Christian Furman, 6'2", 235-pound sophomore. Also Cameron Johnson, a 5'11", 180-pound sophomore out of Horston, Georgia. Your safeties, free safety, is Zay Roberson, 6'1", 180-pound freshman out of Lakeland, Florida. Chris Smith out of Dakota, Georgia, 6'2", 200-pound sophomore. And John Huggins, a 6'2", 205-pound redshirt sophomore out of Daytona Beach, Florida. Your corners, Keelan Kennedy, 5'11", 185 pound redshirt sophomore out of Daytona Beach. And Antoine Davis, 5'9", 165 pound sophomore out of Macon, Georgia. That's the starting defense for coach, uh, defensive coordinator Jerry Dominguez in his second season here at Garden City, but he's been coached by Tom Minnick for over 14 years prior to that at, West, at Arizona Western. We're going to take our final break here on the American Implement pregame show. Coming up, John Ford's Keys to the Game. 
Also get your kickoff. You're listening to Bronx Buster Football 99.9 The Rock. Erica is at work. From farms to construction sites to factories, millions of people operate tractors and heavy equipment every day to help keep America strong and growing. When operating dump trucks or equipment with booms or other extensions, watch out for overhead electrical lines. Make sure there's adequate clearance because coming in contact with those lines could result in a tragedy. For more safety information, visit WECI.net and click on the safety tab. An important safety message brought to you by Wheatland Electric, delivering energy for life, your touchstone energy cooperative. Farmers Insurance Rodrigo Ruvalcaba Agency is proud to be a supporter of the Garden City Bronx Busters. Understanding your needs both with the business and personal challenges, Rodrigo is here to discuss options with you to get you only the coverage you need and none of what you don't. Farmers Insurance Agent Rodrigo Ruvalcaba, always here for you and supporting the community. See him at 503 Main Street. Go Bronx Busters! Propane heats our homes and shops, can supplement irrigation engines. And did you know that you can order a new vehicle fitted to operate on propane? Garden City Propane is a local, family-owned company that can help you maximize your fuel dollars with safe and affordable options. They have tanks, can get parts, and provide reliable delivery by people that have lived here and been in the business for years. So, you never have to worry. Contact Garden City Propane today to find out more. Lewis Automotive Group in Hayes, Dodge City, Garden City, Liberal, and Topeka treat the needs of each individual customer with paramount concern. They know you have high expectations, and as a car dealer, they enjoy the challenge of meeting and exceeding those standards each and every time. Allow Lewis to demonstrate their commitment to excellence. They encourage you to browse their online inventory, schedule a test drive, and investigate financing options. You can also request more information about a vehicle using their online form. For more information, go online to buylewis.com, where you always get it for less. Buster Stadium, Bronx Busters take the field here for the first time in what's supposed to be a 2020 season now in the spring of 2024. We'll see the leader of the kickoff here on the American Tradition this evening. So it is 55 degrees here in Garden City. Wind out of the north at 20 miles per hour. This feel like two, but a beautiful day, Sean, for for football. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, I, I, I mean, I'm feeling the excitement. Yeah. I mean, being here and, and the music playing and the kids getting warmed up and hyped up, I mean, geez, I've missed this for the last couple couple seasons, so this is pretty nice. Uh, you know what? I think the first key is the nerves because you got uh, young kids that may be playing their first game ever at the junior college level. And so nerves are going to be a key, but I think once the uh, first couple of snaps have occurred, I think they'll probably settle in, hopefully. And then I think execution. I think at this time of the season, you don't want to be in midseason form. You, we got to realize it's preseason, and you know what? Let's not put the cart before the horse. Let's execute. Let's execute. Third thing I think is, as it always is, is turnovers. I think uh, we have to limit the turnovers and the mistakes as much as possible. And then lastly, I don't think you get caught up in the score. I think you get caught up in playing hard and competing. To me, if those kids can do that, hey, I think winning will take care of itself, actually. Us Look forward to keys of the game brought to you by Garden Street Value. As we wrap up the American Implement pregame show, Garden City takes the football field. It looks like Garden City will kick off from left to right to start the football game. Black uniforms, tops and pants are black, gold numbers, and gold helmets with the Garden City G on one side and each player's individual number on the right side. Arkansas Baptist wearing all white with purple numbers here today. Arkansas Baptist going right to left to receive. Kicking off for Garden City, Joe Carroll, redshirt freshman from Grand Junction, Colorado. And because it is Western Kansas, the ball blows off the tee. Sort of anticlimactic. <laughs> <laughs> it will delay the season even longer. Tell you what, the football coach and, and Jeff Tatum, our athletic director, is coming out. He's pacing the sidelines. Back to receive for Arkansas Baptist, Andre Barnes from Houston, Texas, 5'975 pound freshman. We are underway. It's a split kick down the field, and it is fair caught. 
looked like it was a fair catch. About the 22-yard line by Garden City there to make the tackle. Off the defense, Jonathan Huggins there to make the tackle. On that CD, I mean, when it when it's getting on the ground like that, uh, I mean, he's got to make a play. And yeah, if he doesn't make a play, then Garden City's going to recover the ball. So fortunately, <laughs> they surrounded the ball with a bunch of white jerseys. And, and then we proceeded to knock that pile over. <laughs> 56 to go here in the first quarter. Arkansas Baptist football at the 25-yard line. We'll see what the Buffaloes do here with their first possession. Cedric Andrews, the quarterback, the running back. Tight end Lincoln Jody. Wide receiver Brandon Murray and Lindsey Wilson. Ball on the far half to start the game for Andrews. Needs a snap to Andrews. He turns around and hands it off to Goodall. Goodall on the right side is wrapped up by a host of Broncosters. Taken down for a loss. You know, see, in the warm-ups, he looked mighty good. But I'll tell you what, when you put a defense from a, another another school in front of them, all of a sudden things change pretty quick. Change a lot. Loss of one on the play. Loss of one will be second and 11. Down to 11. The offensive line, the Lynch stopped their left tackle. Deontay Rozier left guard. The center is Zachary Moore. The right guard, Malik Hinton, and Keyshawn Howell is the right tackle. Arkansas Baptist with Andrews in the shotgun. You know, a key issue today also is going to be our linebacker play. You know, we got to. Here's a snap to Andrews. It's a keeper by Andrews after faking the handoff, and he's not going to get through the tackle of Jonathan Huggins. He moved from Daytona Beach, Florida. Another loss. Because I was saying the linebackers, uh, I mean, that's what kind of brings all the, you know, the rush and the, the, the support together. And, uh, if they can, if they can really excel, I think we're going to have a heck of a defense this year. A third and forever for this Arkansas Baptist offense. Here's a handoff to Goodall on the right side. He's got some room. Finally taken down past the 25. Really good on the ball carrier. Garden City. Tackled there by Kaylon Kennedy. He is a Furman. I tell you, Goodall. He's the type of player that you get him out in space, he's going to be dangerous because he's so quick and fast. Six on the play brings up fourth down and nine. Fourth and Shaw Gansey, the punter for Arkansas Baptist, standing at about the 12-yard line. It's a low snap. He picks it up and gets off a very short kick, bounces at the 40-yard line, rolls back inside the 40 to the 38-yard line of Garden City. <laughs> CD, that kick was hideous. Ball is down at the Buffalo 39-yard line. Is going to take over first and 10. He even spiraled the ball. <laughs> but it didn't cut the wind. Sorry, I said Garden City 39. I meant Arkansas Baptist yes. 39. That's not a good kick. So great field position for the Garden City offense as they take the field for the first time. Really excited to see Larson play. That is the quarterback. Devin Larson out of Arizona. Pistol formation here for Garden City. Here's the snap to Larson. He's going to turn around and hand it off to Ford. Ford on the right side. He's got some blocking. He's at the 30, the 25. Cuts inside. Inside the 20-yard line goes to Jordan Ford for a gain on first down to the 20-yard line on first down. That was impressive. He was led by a bunch of blockers on that one. The gain is to the 20-yard line, which is good for another you know, buster. One of the things I noticed about uh, Coach Orth Orthman's uh, – Offenses, they kind of like to muck it up, and then you know, with that 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 scat back, just kind of break out through that that crowd. Looks like Xavier Peters is in the backfield with Jordan Ford. So a bigger back with a smaller back. Ford goes in motion right to left into the flat. Here's a handoff to Peters. Peters on the right side at the ten, inside the ten, dives for the pylon on the right side, and they're going to say he was out of bounds at the two. Tell you what, both backs have started out really with some impressive play. How about Xavier Peters with a rush? Originally a defensive player. He has 
the defensive end to Westchester, Ohio. With the game is two days. He's only 6'4", 255 pounds. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, he was impressive. So first and goal now for Garden City as they've gone right down the field with a short field. 12.32 to go here in the first quarter. Garden City threatening to score. Here's Larson, the quarterback. In the pistol. They'll turn around and hand it off to Ford right up the middle. Ford is tripped up at the goal line. He's going to be a couple inches short of the score. Go the ball Arkansas Baptist on the stop at the one. It was a great tackle by Jalen Sanders from Arkansas Baptist. Got a hand out, tripped him up. Second goal now for Garden City. Line. This brings up second down and goal. Ball's in the middle of the field. Working left to right. Garden City with the wind at their back. So it looks like they're going to just try and punch it in here on the ground. There was a jump. Somebody jumped and scrambled for the football. The referee's got a little look at who, who was that? Are they going to say it's against Arkansas Baptist? Sure looked like it. You don't know if the interior of that line raised a hand or flinched. Offside against the defense. Good. Instead of a instead of half a foot, it's going to be a quarter of a foot now. That was close as you can get here. The ball, that was the ball near the goal line. I'm not so sure it's not touching the goal line. So the pistol formation again. The lone back is Jordan Ford. Larson will get the snap, turn around, just give it to Ford as he squirts forward in the end zone. Good touchdown for the Garden City Broncos. Their first of the season. And we got extra, extracurricular activity here. No flags, though. And the touchdown will stand for Jordan Ford, his first of the 2021 spring season. Garden City leads 6 0 on a one yard run by Jordan Ford. Well, that was just, uh, you know, three yards in a cloud of dust. Keeping it on the ground. Not, like you said, not one pass, right? Yep, not one pass. Actually, it's three yards in a cloud of pellets. <laughs> now we move. Yep. <laughs> Attempting the extra point will be Carroll for Garden City. Holding will be Erwin Smith. Good snap, good snap, bad hold. Ball's on the ground. And it's picked up by Arkansas Baptist. They tried to run it back, but a nice heads up play by the uh, by Garden City's Carroll, the kicker, to make the tackle. Otherwise, it would have been two points back the other way. Arkansas Baptist, but Garden City special teams uh, struggling a little bit there on the point after. 6 nothing in the lead for Garden City with 11.32 to go here in the first quarter. I think the big thing with us is we have got to take advantage of this win because it's going to be difficult for Arkansas Baptist to both pass and kick in this win. Four plays, 39 yards for the Bronkbusters. All 39 of those yards coming on the ground. Which is a positive sign on a windy day. <laughs> yes, it is. CD, we've got a late arriving crowd, but a good crowd. It's good to see a crowd kind of. Oh, absolutely. Last year has been crazy. Yeah. We got softball pl over there playing on the Benjamin Sports Complex. Garden City Bronkbuster basketball in action tonight. You can hear that game, those games right here on 99.9 The Rock after this one. 5.30 the start for the women's game, and then 7.30 for the men's as both teams take on Hutchinson on the road. Janine Hutchinson, Mike Kulikoff will be on the call for those games uh, for Garden City. Bronkbusters will be kicking off for the second time here today. It will be Carroll, Joe Carroll to kick off. Redshirt freshman from Grand Junction, Colorado, will be kicking off to Andre Barnes. And it's another swift hit. It hits the ground and bounces at the 15. It's picked up by Barnes inside the 15. He's going to take it. Barnes up the middle of the field. He's got room. Gets past the 35 and is taken down. Fired to the 40. But a flag flies to about the 33-yard line. We'll see what this is. I think, that, I think the flag was farther in the air than the uh, kick was. Right. And the Garden City kicking with the wind. Here, but keeping it on the ground caused problems for the return team. 
holding against Arkansas Baptist. Second, no, third penalty of the game. They've all been against Arkansas Baptist. So this will back up the Buffaloes to the 24. It's going to be interesting to see if, uh, if uh, Cedric Andrews goes to the air tonight. Andrews, the quarterback, in the shotgun for the Buffalo. Here's the snap and the handoff to Gadal, who is wrapped up in the backfield, taken down for a loss. One of the tacklers there for Garden City was Cameron Johnson out of Houston, uh, Horseman, Georgia. He dang near handed that off to a defensive lineman. Great, great penetration by the Garden City defensive line. Second and long, and Arkansas Baptist has not gone forward here today offensively. So back under center, runs up to the line of scrimmage and then back out to the pistol formation of Andrews. Andrews with the snap, turnaround, handoff to Dahl, and there to make the tackle, Garden City. Another loss, Jonathan Huggins there. Tackled me by Jonathan Huggins. I'll tell you what, so far that defensive line has been really impressive. The final of the play brings up third down and 20. Third and 20 for Arkansas Baptist. John Huggins. He plays defensive back, John Ford, but he looks like a linebacker at 6'2", 205. He's kind of like a hybrid. He yep. plays, plays all over the place. He is... As D1 talent played eight games at Florida University, University of Florida. Here's the keeper now by Andrews. Andrews going to try and cut it up the field. The Broncosters all over that. They contain him here on the left side. You know, Huggins did a great job he playing the outside the portion of the field, forcing everything inside. And I think that really helped out Kevin with uh, limiting Andrews that run. Abrams for Wayne. Kevin Abrams for Wayne, defensive end there for the tackle. And it's fourth down. The play brings Another up three and out 13. for Arkansas Baptist. Another punt. Let's see if they do a little bit better this time. It's a different punter. Look at the look at the punt formation. That's a, the same punter. Left side Nancy Hansen. Hansen. a high short punt. Fair catch called for by Chris Smith. Fair so Cameron was born with it. By Cameron Lagan. Fair catch at the 36. At the 36 yard line of the Buffalo. Again, Street not a great punt. Buster. No, no. Of course, I, I I really think that we've got a little bit to do with it. I mean, I don't know the history of their punters, but I would say, you know, that wind is coming in kind of like a wind tunnel going right through this stadium. The ball has not made it past the 50-yard line. Garden <laughs> City takes over from left to right. I didn't even think about that. Here's a snap to Larson. Larson is going to hand it off to Ford. Ford up the middle now, bounces it to the far side. At the 20-yard line is Ford. 15, 10, 5, inside the 5-yard line. He's finally tripped up by a defensive back. And Ford, tripped up by Darren Petty, is going to have a first and goal for Garden City again. Big carry by Jordan Ford. My goodness, our yeah, offensive line is just flat out crushing the people. The fifth-ranked team in the country. First and goal for the inside the five yard line again at the three. Two yarder. And I'll tell you what, Jordan Ford's also like uh, Archinoff Baptist's back. I mean, he you get him out in space, and I mean, he's tough to bring down. First and goal for the Broncosters. Is Ford a holdover from the 19th? Yeah. yeah. Turn around, hand off to Ford. Ford going to cut up, and he is slipped on the turf at the five and will lose a couple yards. That yeah, was well defended. Uh, Jalen Sanders did another good job of coming out and playing contained. I forced everything inside, and they made a nice play. It was a loss of four, which gave them the flag, but they're willing to look for a stop play. Offside, number seven, huh. defense, in the neutral side. Maybe that's why. Let's get to the goal. Replay, second offside down. Offside for Arkansas Baptist. Again, ball at the two-yard line. We're talking about Jordan Ford. On that 29th City team, I don't know if you remember John Smith, but he played the ball behind Jordan. Line 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 Jefferson, Jaden Hayes, Ellis Mayweather, three really good backs. Yeah. He did have two touchdowns, yeah. 39 carries. Here's the handoff to Peters, who on the left side follows <laughs> left guard and tackle and gets in for the touchdown. Xavier Peters. Xavier Peters. Peters. Xavier Peters. Xavier Peters. Xavier Peters. Xavier Peters. Xavier Peters. 
making his name known on the offensive side. I tell you what, he's an exciting young man. Uh, 255. CD, imagine trying to tackle that. Jacob Peters, Westchester, Ohio. Yes, so unfortunately, he's a car, not registered sophomore. A four star recruit coming out of high school. Was at Florida State for a year and then Kentucky had a year. Didn't play much at either school. Uh, we'll see if he can uh, get the extra point off here. And another bad handle by Mike Irwin. And the again, a no good, good extra point. No it's 12 0 Garden City, it's 7 point to go in the third quarter. Well, if there's one glaring error so far through seven minutes of this game, it's our extra point field goal attempt. I think the holders fumbled twice. Yeah. That's Mike Irwin, the backup quarterback from Oregon. And yeah, like John Ford said, that's really the only bad spot on the day for Garden City so far. This is the third time we've been on the other side of the 50. <laughs> it's our kickoff. <laughs> All for kickoff. <laughs> It's everybody's first game, including the officials. Yes. And I don't know why we, all that time went by. We set up for a kickoff before they decided they were going to re-kick this extra point. And here's a, here's the thing. Six officials went with it. <laughs> uh, the other five were like, yeah, that's a great idea. Let's do it again. Yeah, those, those officials were, they were lined up for a kickoff. The right hand doesn't know what the left hand's doing out there right now. So Joe Carroll's tied again. Now we got a new holder out here. It's Jazz Dominguez, the holder for Garden City. Another quarterback. Yes. So we'll see if this is a little better this time. And not much, but Dominguez somehow gets the snap down after fumbling it a little bit. That's the kick is good. That's the first kick in the air. <laughs> that's on kickoff and. <laughs> good point. So they switch the. on the ground, and Arkansas Baptist had picked it up after the missed extra point, and they blew the whistle. I think yeah. that was the inadvertent whistle. Boy, that really... Yeah, that really hammered... Oh, boy. I'll tell you what, if I'm the Arkansas Baptist head coach, I'm a little... Well, I'm not very happy about that at all, because they had a line of blocking, too. <laughs> it could have been a two-point. Is that their best field or field uh, position? It is. Twenty-six. Only taking twenty-six yards on the defensive play for the Arkansas Badgers secondary. Let's see what Arkansas Badgers can do here. Try to get a rep under the right for this. That's their best offensive play of the day right there. Well blocked. Little deception. Kind of kind of a counter action. There's a flag. See, they're pointing that way anyway. Oh, I'm, I'm 
telling you, man, it's uh, okay. It's on uh, it's for sure. I bet at Arkansas Baptist is feeling pretty froggy now. Yeah. You know, one thing I got to say is percentage wise, we've had a higher percentage being at their mesh point than their running backs have been. I think the only thing that kept that from being a penalty maybe would be the fact he didn't lead with the helmet. I think it was uh, I think it was uh, Antonio Davis made the hit. No. See, I don't know. You know what, CD? Um, I don't know if he was giving himself up or if uh, Antonio Davis gave him gave him the opportunity to give himself up. I mean, like a simultaneous type thing and I mean how do you how do you officiate that I mean it's I mean other than if he led with the helmet it was easy to officiate that would have been an easy penalty and probably an ejection from the game It's on us. It's on us. It's uh. I. They're gonna go right back out there on defense because that was a penalty on us. I'm not so sure it wasn't a horse collar. Yeah, the defense has had an opportunity to get off the field a couple of times now, but because of penalties, it's kept the drive going. And CD, this is a, this is the time of season where you need to iron out that type of stuff. You know, I mean, uh, if you're putting it on film, you know, they're going to talk about it in the film room, and then hopefully it's going to resonate next game. Jeez. 
still two on the play. He brings up third down now and a running. see what happened. I mean, I was looking at number four for us, uh, uh, Ingram, Wembley, uh, geez, I can say that name, Mali, yeah, he, uh, he, he was like shot out of the gun. He knocked Andrews to the ground. I actually thought Andrews still had the ball. Actually, not a bad sign. He's coming off on his own power. It looks like he may have gotten hit in the midsection. Surely they're going to go for it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Anderson Crouch brings up fourth down and 12. You know what, it's going to be interesting to see what our offense does with long field ahead of them. You know, see, we were talking about this before the game. Kind of want to hear your thoughts on it, but I mean, Arkansas Baptist is dodging nobody this year as far as their schedule. I mean, their schedule is incredible. back pass on fourth down steps up into the pocket he's in trouble throws it over here on the near side near the sideline to Malik Goodall who is popped by Elijah Garaville and it's going to be a turnover on downs and Arkansas Baptist is obviously going to take over at the 33. Well I think they tried to accomplish what they wanted to do and that's get Goodall out in space but I mean Garden City defender basically deposited both the blocker and the ball carrier into the ground. You can tell Jordan's got that extra gear. You know, when he sees that opening, all of a sudden he puts it into second gear and gets going. Steps up into the pocket. He's going to float it down the middle of the field, and it's just out of the reach of his receiver, Austin Simmons. Boy, that was a nice looking pass, though. Simmons out of Sandy Springs, Georgia, six foot one, over 75 pounds of freshman. Couldn't catch up with him. It'll be now third down, first third down. 
game, I believe, has already saved. Yep. Thompson will huddle it up. 3.18 to go in the first. 13 to 0. Lead for the Broncos. Larson will now have three receivers to his right and one to the left with four next to him to his right in the backfield and the shotgun. Here's a snap to Larson. Larson at the pass. Throws it down the field and just airmails it. He snaps up into the pocket, and I don't know if he completed the ball in the range of motion with his hand. Got stopped a little early because there were people in front of him, but he's just it could be. It could be a number of things. Could be a number of things. I mean, you know, the receivers ran the wrong pattern. Uh, uh, the wind made the ball sail a little bit. Um, I mean, these are the things that that first game helps you to iron out a little bit. Joe Carroll is the two and all kicker. Eric Garner said he was punting as well. That's the 21 yard line. Nice snap. Not a great hit. A high slip. And it bounces oh Spartan goodness. City's way inside the 20, inside the 10, and the Broncosters catch up to it. It's inside the 5. I stand corrected, Joe Carroll. Joe what a punt. Down at the line. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> Things are literally looking up for our kicker. <laughs> You know the one thing that's missing? I mean, I love the music. I mean, I do love the music. But the one thing that's missing is our band. You know? Yeah. Casey Hans does a great job with them. Beautiful punt to the four-yard line. Here's a handoff. Right side now to Arkansas back is Cade Hill. Gain of about two. I wonder if Arkansas Baptist is going to just have to go, you know, put helmet on helmet and just go straight up the middle. Cut the fancy stuff and just hand the ball off and see what you can get. Maybe build a little confidence in the running game. He was in seven-yard line over here, second down and seven. Another handoff. Oh, oh. the ball's on the ground. It's picked up. Garden City or was in Keelan Kennedy's hands. He saw the end zone in front of him. I think Arkansas Baptist got it back. He had visions of grandeur. Wow. And you forgot one thing. The ball. The ball. <laughs> Number eight on Arkansas Baptist. By the way, that punt, 60 yards. 60 yards. I wonder. Yeah. getting lit up in the backfield. A big tackle by number 96, Daniel LaBelle. The defensive tackle at Forsyth, Georgia, on the tackle. In the backfield, it's a loss. Now fourth and long and a timeout called by Garden City. Long to the six-yard line. You know, I wonder if, uh, I wonder what would happen if Andrews got under center. Rather than stay back there and just hand the ball off and go straight up the middle. Started out as an ugly duckling and ended up a beauty. <laughs> the roll was the big thing. Here's a punt down the return. Arkansas Baptist in its 
taken at the 25. Being wrapped up in tackles at the Cameron Lakeland will return. 16 yard line for Cameron Lakeland. Tell you what, have they started? Well, other than that last drive, every other drive has been, yeah, about this territory. You know, you can kind of feel like we're settling in, and by settling in, we're starting to get into a comfort zone. That comfort zone is starting to, you know, we're starting to make mistakes. We're starting to get lazy mentally. And so we need to reestablish that, that execution and concentration. The 15 rolls over a defender inside the 10 and the nine. Got a flag. Flag at the 28. There's a flag on the flag. Kind of a hold that blocks the pass. Yeah. Conversation. It's like a football coach being mic'd up during a game. No way. Oh, wow. You know, one thing about those NHL officials, I have never, ever seen anybody skate as fast as them. Oh, they are. Holy smokes. They fly around that rink. What a great play call. Wow. Yeah, cut right off the left guard and boom. 23 yards down the field. I can't wait to see his first quarter stats, see where he's at. Because I'm telling you what, he's putting some yardage on the board. With temperatures that have been so cold, Robinson Furniture in Garden City wants to warm things up so you can be ready for that spring furniture facelift at great savings. It's a store-wide sale. Everything will be marked on sale, and on top of that, we will warm things up even more with extended financing of up to 60 months with 0% interest. Right now, take advantage of in-stock mattresses that are ready for delivery or pickup. It's been a long, cold winter, so head to Robinson Furniture and warm your home up with new furniture. And thank you for shopping with us. With spring around the corner, it's time to put the craftsmanship of quality structures to work for you on your next building project. Whatever it is you've got planned, garage, hobby shop, ag, or equestrian, the experts at QSI will see it through from design to done. And during our annual... You know what that is? Spinning vinyl? vinyl? Yeah. It's like a record? No, right. Yeah. <laughs> out. You have until March 31st to save big on your next project. Visit us at qualitystructures.com for more details. Back at Bronkbuster Stadium, Garden City with a third. Seven carries for 82 yards already and a touchdown. Garden City out gaining Arkansas Baptist 98 yards to 11. As we get ready to start the second quarter, 
Garden City Bass uh, football. Ooh. Wrong score. <laughs> right to left at the looks like three yard line. So Xavier Peters is the lone back. Turn around, hand off to Peters. Peters up the middle. He's wrapped up from behind. Good and tackle. He's being taken down by Jisreel Judy. Extracurricular activity is stopped or anything. Yeah, I don't like to see that. A penalty will happen. Got to maintain our poise out there. Peters will come off. Ford will come in. And now a second and goal from the two for Garden City. Now Judy is considered Arkansas Baptist defensive rover. So obviously he's going to go to the strong part of the formation. He did a nice job of that last play. So everybody's looking go. at the play clock. <laughs> Trying to get feeling when the eyes turn around and look at you. Yeah. Here's Barson in motion, right to left. There's the halfback. Now turn around, hand off to Ford up the middle, and he is stuck. No gain. Good. Maybe a loss even on the play. Yeah. One of the players there, Darren Petty for the Buffaloes. Third and goal now. You can tell this is a great opportunity for Garden City to get some stuff on film as far as their run game going straight ahead. You know, playing a little smash mouth here. Third and, four, uh, third and goal from the four now. Garden City has not passed here in the red zone. Barson with backs to either side of him. Snap to Larson, it's high, a handoff on a sweet play to Ford, who is taken down at the four. So now fourth and goal, a gain of nothing. I'll tell you what's really hindering our offense right now is a snap. That snap is not crisp, and it's slowing off the timing. Yeah. So now fourth and goal from the four for Garden City. He leads 13 to 0 for Arkansas Baptist, but the Buffaloes look at the goal line stand here. So now you're starting to develop a list of things that they need to work on. Two receivers right, one to the left. Peters is the back to the right side of Larson in the shock. He's going to drop back to pass. He's under pressure. Gets past its sack. Now lobs it into the end zone, and it's incomplete. Thrown out of bounds. It was picked off, and out of bounds was the Arkansas Baptist defensive back and the Buffaloes get a stop Garden City turns it over on down that's a big stand for Arkansas Baptist I'm telling you it's like the energy's kind of sucked out of us I mean we're just and I, I think probably it's probably the normal human thing that happens after you you start a game really you know on fire you hit that lull, and I think we're in that lull right now. We just got to reestablish our energy, reestablish our concentration. More importantly, reestablish our execution, because our execution has been god awful. For a, pos a possession that started at the 17 yard line, Garden City stalls out. Now here's a handoff to Barnes in the backfield. He is wrapped up near the goal line. They're going to say he got to the two. Forward progress. Barnes going nowhere. That's a famous line out of Spider Man. <laughs> Jay Robeson, one of the tacklers there, particularly for Garden City. Now it's second and 12 from the two. Acts like he's going under center, then he backs back out. I think he just follows instructions from his offensive line. Here's a snap, handoff Barnes. Barnes getting on the left side, looking for the edge, and he is ran over on the far side by Furman. Not a bad run. I mean, they definitely gave themselves some breathing room there. Now third and, I think, eight. Baptist balls on the far hash. This will be a big, big 
possession here for Arkansas basketball. The punting has not been great here today. Looks like they got Max Protect. Two backs on either side of Andrews in the shotgun. Here's the snap, fake the handoff to Barnes, and in trouble is Andrews, it's a safety. There to make the tackle, Arvell Ferguson limped off the field earlier, but it looks like he's okay. He gets the sack for the safety, and Garden City scores two points. I mean, it was like our defensive line was shot out again. I mean, it just, they rained upon Andrews on that one. 15-0 to zero the score now after the safety. And that's part of why you go for it on fourth and goal from the four. Yeah. You're not too worried about Arkansas Baptist getting out of the shadow of their own end zone and then you get two points out of it. Well, I mean, Coach Minnick has a lot of, a lot of confidence in our defense, I think. And I think he knows they're just going to get better and better as the season goes, so gave them that opportunity. The Buffaloes now are gonna have to kick off to Garden City. This will be the first time here today that Garden City will return a kickoff. Maybe the first time this punter has actual opportunity to get the ball more than 20 yards in the air. <laughs> and it's an, I'm, I'm telling you, you try punting in that wind, it's tough. <laughs> Sean Yancey will be kicking off. Elon Kennedy back to receive as is Cameron LeBourne. And it's got to be one of those safety punts, I think. Ooh, I think he might be going off the tee. Yep. Yeah, they just threw the tee and he will feel the play. But he's going to have to kick off from the 20. This will be Arshad Gancy, 5'10", 208 pound freshman out of North Little Rock, Arkansas. Arkansas Baptist, 650 miles away, John Ford. A 10 hour, 10 minute drive if you're not on a bus. Probably a lot longer if you are on a bus. I wonder what their campus is like. I bet it's, I bet it's a beautiful campus. Here is a kick drive kick oh. that is through the legs of Keelan Kennedy. He picks it back up at about the 16-yard line. Dances around. He's taken out to 25. So uh, avoiding disaster. Another flag. Keelan Kennedy. We got a flag at the 32. And I will tell you, that was a very tough punt to try to urge. A tough kick to field. Because you don't know if it's going to bounce or if it's going to scoot on you. In this particular case, it scooted right underneath his legs. Heck of a croquet shot, right between the wickets. <laughs> after, the, after the first quarter, Dodge City on top of RPA College 16 0. Through the wicket. Penalties on Garden City. What the Sand Hills 42 do? For them? Yeah, he just. <laughs> go back out and grab some food? No. I don't know what he did. <laughs> he went complete. I feel like I'm in an alternate universe right now. <laughs> it'll be Garden City football on their own 15 now is where it back, they're backed up after the penalty. So this officially is Garden City's worst field possession, uh, starting field position of the day. Larson turns around, hands it off to Ford. Ford up the middle, gets a first down. He's taken down at the 27, 28 yard line. Gain of about 13 or 14 there for uh, Jordan Ford. Really impressed with Garden City's run game. I think the big concern I have is a snapback for the quarterback because it does throw the timing off. And against people like Hutchinson and Butler, we're going to have to have that timing. Ball far hash. One receiver left, one to the right. A tight end in the backfield next to Larson, who's in the pistol. Behind him is Ford. Snap to Larson. Turn around, hand off to Ford. He's got a lead blocker. It's Damison. The defense is there to wrap up and tackle in the backfield. Jismil Chui out of Miami, Florida, is there 
for the tackle for a loss. That's the second big tackle he's had today, isn't it? He truly is the rover. Yes. The ball is on the near hash now, second and long for Garden State, second and about 16. Ball at the 22-yard line. They need, Garden City does, the 38 for a first down. Three receivers right, one to the left for Larson. Larson, who has not completed a pass here today, will try one here. Throws it far side. It is caught by his tight end. Davis on the far side. He was tripped up past the 30 to the 32. Nice pass. Bryce yeah. Davis at 110 West Virginia with the catch. Nice run after the pass, too. I'll tell you, <laughs> Jalen Sanders for Arkansas Baptist. He just chirping down there. <laughs> I may not make the play, but you're going to hear me. Third and five for Garden City. That's a nice pickup there on second down. So now third and manageable ball on the 32-yard line. First completion of the day for Devin Larson. He's in the shotgun. Almost drew Arkansas Baptist offside. Here's a handoff to Ford. He is wrapped up and taken down immediately by Jalen Sanders, and he's still talking. Pumping that chest now. Well, you add fuel to a fire. Yeah. And now fourth down for Garden City. They go... Three and out. I mean, since those first two or three drives, I think Arkansas Baptist has played, hasn't played bad. Yeah. I mean, they're playing with energy. So three and out for Garden City. 8.43 to go here in the second quarter. Carroll, see if he can get another 60-yarder. Flag flies. It's short and high, and on a running catch is Barr. The 42. Got a helmet rolling out there in the middle of the field. A <laughs> flag pull. You know what the flag is for here is thrown at the snap by a line judge. Might be a hold on us. Might be illegal formation. Anything. You know? They're going over to talk to the. Uh, Arkansas Baptist head coach, so I'll bet you it's on us. Because they're going over options over there. Garden City goes four plays. Illegal formation, kicking team. On the big backfield. A five yard penalty was tacked on to give the kick. Illegal formation. Down, Arkansas Baptist. Okay. You kind of wonder, you know, might it have been worth him to re kick it? as much problem as we've had with our kicking game and into the wind. So Arkansas Baptist will take over at the 47. Here's the snap, Andrews to throw into the backfield. Uh, coming out of the backfield is Goodall, and it's incomplete. A little low from Malik Goodall. Last drive for Garden City, by the way. Four plays, 18 yards, 2 minutes and 51 seconds. So, yeah, since Garden City's first and second possession, it's been a three and out punt, a turnover on downs, and then a four play drive that ends in a punt. Andrews in the shotgun receives the snap. He's going to launch it down the field on the near side, overthrows everybody. On the defense for Garden City, Antoine Davis, the DB. I think the intended receiver was Jimmy Roberts. I will tell you what, Andrews, he can spin the ball. Yeah. That was a heck of a throw. Now it was with the wind, but it still was a good throw. I'm, I'm sorry, he he just doesn't have the receivers to catch up with it. Boy, that was, would have been hard for anyone. Yeah. Tyreek Hill would have had a hard time catching up to that ball. 8.16 to go here. It's 15 nothing, Garden City. Here's a snap. Andrews is going to fire it on the far side, and it is caught over there on Ooh. that far side with a nice tackle at the 49-yard line is Keelon Kennedy. Boy, Keelon Kennedy put the hammer to him. It was uh, Raylene Bell with the reception. That's one thing you can tell. Our secondary likes to hit. They do like to hit. <laughs> yes, they do. Keelon Kennedy. 
couple of years at Fort Hayes State University, all MIAA honorable mention. It's going to be a punt now. Yancey will punt for the Buffaloes as he steps into Ooh. one, gets off a short one, and a Dang late it. flag. This is going to be a personal foul against Garden City, and it's going to be a first down for Arkansas Baptist. Man, another mistake. That went right through our hands, too. I mean, if our hands were together, we'd have blocked that sucker. Personal foul. Yep. Guilty party for Garden City. Darius, uh, Darius Johnson out of Spokane, Washington. It's one of those situations, CD, where, you know, you've done everything right. But the guy just manages to sneak it through your hands. At the 34-yard line, now for Arkansas Baptist. Turn around, hit off Barnes, who tries to cut inside, is wrapped up and taken down. One of the tacklers, Raymond Cuts. A host of other Bronkbusters are there to make the tackle. John Huggins is there as well. Seven long now for Arkansas Baptist. Seven fifteen and counting to go here in the first half. Andrews goes up to the offensive line now. He backs back out to the shotgun. He's got Barnes to his left. Two receivers left, one to the right. Here's a handoff to Barnes. Barnes wrapped up. Before the line of scrimmage, Eli Hill, one of those there to make the tackle, native of Phoenix, Arizona, for a loss. Ball back to the 35 for a loss of about half a yard. Third and 11 now for Arkansas Baptist. the snap to Andrews. He's going to look to pass. Now, Argyle Ferguson is there. Ferguson along with Furman there for the sack. And Andrews goes down at the 46. Wow, what a rush. <laughs> it didn't. It looked like Andrews didn't even have a chance to fake to his back before we were on him. They're going to place it at the 45. So another punt here from Yancey. Our shot is punt again. High snap. Yancey gets it down. He gets off a short high spinner. It bounces at the 29 inside to the 26 yard line, I believe. CD, that went much better than him doing it again. New win. Yeah, had to win that time. That's not a great punt. It was first and 10. Wreaking havoc with the timing. Third and short, third and one. You keep it on the ground here? I would. Davis, the tight end in the backfield to the right of Larson. Ford to his left from the shotgun. High snap again. Ford with the handoff up the middle. He's going to get the first down. And then moving the legs to the 40-yard line. Tackle made on the play by Brandon Benson. It's interesting that Larson's three passes he's thrown, he's completed the one against the wind. <laughs> well, you mentioned it. One for four. Devin Larson here today. So, I mean, this is Orthman's offense. They like to run the football. They do. They do. And I think, I think a, uh, the passing game is a work in progress as the season goes. 39 first and 10 and jumping off. Uh, uh, Arkansas Baptist says against Garden City. It was. Yeah, or right. And Damis, I think, here with a false Either start. that or a right tackle. Yeah. You're right. It is Ellen Ghani with the jump. 6 4 3 to 30 pound sophomore right tackle. Costing Garden City five yards. First and 15 now with 4.07 to go. Here in the second quarter, coming up in the Morton Building Halftime Show, we'll take a look at the first half recap. 
get your stats and we'll go to that Dodge City RPA college game. Shotgun formation for Larson. Here's a snap to Larson. Drops back to pass. Steps up into the pocket. Fires it far side right into the hands of his intended receiver. Completed to Austin Simmons for a first down at midfield. Boy, that was a beautiful pass, CD. Beautiful pass. Nice catch. I'll tell you, Larson has an arm. He does have an arm. Got good size for a quarterback, too. 6'4". Get a free year of football here. Absolutely. And this year does not count against eligibility. Pistol formation now. Larson going to turn around, hand it off to Ford going left. Looking for the outside. Looks to cut through defenders. And he's wrapped up and then wrestled down. They're going to call a penalty on that. As the guilty party is uh, Jordan Oglesby. They kind of suplexed him into the ground. There's Sanders chirping again. <laughs> well, he does. He incites. The Garden City team. Let's see what the After the play, personal foul on that's Terry Rossi, number 32, defense. Ugh. 15 yards after the end of the play. So, drive. I don't know. That's ending the play a little early, but, hey, 15 yards for Garden City. You know, personally, I didn't think that should be a penalty. Not, I mean, I've seen that kind of suplex play happen. But I don't think he was thrown down that hard. I mean, Ford wouldn't go down, so yeah. he picked him up and threw him down. Yep. Yeah. He can't help it if he can bench press 390. <laughs> it wasn't blatantly late. No. Okay. Defense almost jumps off sides. Pistol formation. Receiver to either side, and then they do go. It's going to be Jalen Sanders. You know, the one thing that Larson does is he really varies his count, and I think that keeps the defense at bay. Jalen Sanders. Hits a couple push-ups because he's guilty for five yards. Ball on the 30-yard line now for Garden City. With the ability to do that, CD, I think I think that really helps an offensive team. Same formation for Garden City. Larson with the hard count again. And he's going to turn around and fake the handoff. Larson going to step up and throw it to the left, and it's going to be caught on the sideline. They're going to say incomplete. It looked like a beautiful catch yep. by Senyo Jarman. Nice looking pass, nice looking pattern. A great catch. Just happened to be out of bounds. It'll bring up second down and five. Out of the reach of Shuno Jarman. 6'4", 205-pound redshirt sophomore out of Chandler, Arizona. Second and five for Garden City. 2.23 to go in the half. Garden City at the Arkansas Baptist 30-yard line. Two receivers right, one to the left. It's going to be a handoff to Ford. Ford with the shiftiness up the middle. Finally wrapped up and taken down, but not after he gets past the first down marker. Tackle made, Tackle made by, by Jezreel Grant. Judy. And Garden City will get the first down and move the chains. See, they've had a lot of success going up the middle of that play. See, the, the Salmo John Ford here Buster. at Bronx Buster Stadium. Mike Pilosoff is on the road. He will be covering the women's and men's basketball teams for Garden City as they take on Hutchinson tonight on the road, 5.30 and 7.30. Those games can be heard right here. On 99.9, the Rocket home for Bronx Buster Athletics. Here's a snap to Larson. Handoff up the middle. Now bouncing it to the left is Ford at the 10, at the 5, and forces his way inside the 5. He's near the pylon. They're going to say he's out of bounds at the 4. Jordan Ford picks up another first down. It's first and goal. Devin Larson comes out of the game. So what do we have here, a wildcat? Formation? Yeah, we got a wildcat. Coach likes doing this. They did it in 2019 quite a bit. I was just going to say. I think this is one of Coach's favorite formations right here. So Xavier Peters and Jordan Ford in the backfield. Who are going to snap it to? It's going to be Ford, I believe. And they draw... <laughs> They draw Jalen Sanders offsides again. 
not only can our quarterback vary his cadence, but our running backs can vary their cadence. And is this... Timeout, Garden City. Garden City. Second timeout of the half. So they, both teams each have one timeout left here with a minute 37 to go before halftime. And John Ford, is that something that you... I mean, you noticed early on that they were jumping offside, so why not keep trying it? Or well, is this going to be kind of a staple of the offense for Garden City? Well, I, I'm not so sure it's not going to be a staple of the offense because, I mean, when you have a quarterback that can vary their cadence like that, it, it helps uh, putting the, the rush at bay a little bit. In other words, saying, whoa, Darty, you better not be, you know, laying back for our, us going on the first count because we're not. And by putting that little doubt in that defensive line's mind, that helps the offense with what they want to do. And that, they want to get on top of you with the element of surprise. And having that ability now, I think, is a definite asset for the offense. They're going to go back in the same formation. And it's going to be a keeper. Up the middle goes Ford. And he is into the end zone for a touchdown. Jordan Ford scores again. His second touchdown of the day. Garden City with a 21-0 lead. And again, I cannot emphasize the fact we have got to work on our snap back to the quarterback and snap back to the, because that right there, I mean, you could see the timing was thrown off simply because he had to jump up and get it rather than take it right from the snap and go. Well, the extra point has been an adventure here today. So you miss one and a, a make. Carroll, that's a hold by Jazz Dominguez. This time it's good. The snap and the hold. And it's through and good. It's 22 to 0, Garden City. Oh. So nine plays. 75 yards in four minutes and 14 seconds for the Bronx Busters. Capped off by a three yard touchdown run by Jordan Ford in a minute 29 to go in the half in uh, John Ford, that's a big drive. Nine plays, 75 yards, because after drive number two for Garden City was a three and out punt, then a turnover on downs, and then another punt, and the offense kind of hit a brick wall before this last possession. Yeah, we reestablished some momentum offensively, and I think also we started, you know, being a little bit more consistent with, you know, our mindset and concentrating, and I think that was a, that was a great drive. Take off four minutes off the clock. Leaves Arkansas Baptist with just uh, 89 seconds here to go. Down 22 to nothing. Yeah. So kicking off will be Joe Carroll for Garden City. Carroll off the tee. It's a low line drive kick right into the hands of a man at 25 near side. He's going to run up the field past the 40. And a nice return by one of the upmen, Larry Smith, at Baton Rouge, Louis Smith. Louisiana. He about yeah. broke it. Yeah, not a bad field possession here with a minute 21 to go for Arkansas Baptist. They'll have it at the 42. 41, excuse me. Boy, CD, I've missed this environment. <laughs> it's such a nice environment. Feels good to be back at yeah. Buster Stadium. Spring, fall, doesn't matter. Yeah. It's good to see the black and gold back out there. See the fans in the stands and the excitement. Uh, here's a snap to Andrews. He bobbled it momentarily and throws it out of the backfield to Cadal. Cadal on the far side. Cuts inside and gets right. past the man. Now he's on the far sideline, breaking free of tacklers. He's finally pushed out of bounds. But there's going to be a block in the back here at the 41-yard line against Arkansas Baptist. It's coming back. Yeah, it was bigger in daylight, too. It's what sprung him. If they don't get that block, then he doesn't go down the sideline. Got all, got all the way past the 25. The only bad thing about it, it's got to be a legal block, and it wasn't legal. So this will back up Arkansas Baptist. And I mean, it was a blatant right in the yeah. back, too. <laughs> we can see it from up here. I know I had to try to keep you down in your seat, CD. <laughs> Well, that'll back up Arkansas Baptist to about 
Let's see where they're going to place this. Yeah, About the 31. Yeah. 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 Penalty will move the ball back to the Buffalo 31 yard line. That'll bring the first down. Coming up on the Morton Building halftime show, we'll take a look at the first half recap. Also, the stats from the first half. Shout out Austin Terpster, our statistician here today. There's an, uh, Andrews on a pass to the far side that is complete and caught by Adrian Brown. At about the 35 yard line. Adrian Brown. Adrian Brown, Brown forced out of bounds. The second, the set up a second and long here for Arkansas Baptist. I have a funny feeling Andrews is just going to get better as the season goes because he spins the ball pretty good. Andrews in the shotgun with two receivers right, one to the left. Steps up into the pocket. He's in trouble. He's going to slip past a couple of defenders, gets a yard after he's tripped up. I think it was. I think it was Furman, wasn't it? Yeah, Furman that tripped him up. That was a heck of a play. Gain of one, now third and forever. So Arkansas Baptist with under a minute to play. And I think they're going to call a timeout. Garden Hill Garden City calls a timeout trying to get the ball back. I was just wondering if they were going to try. I was just going to ask you, do you think they'd call a timeout and see if maybe we could put a quick one up there or maybe try to block a punt? Yeah, classic coaching move. Tom Minnick said, I got one more, right? One more <laughs> timeout left. No. no. It's the last one. 58 seconds remaining here in the half. Garden City leads 22-0. to zero. A touchdown by Jordan Ford to start the game. On Garden City's first possession, extra point was missed. Then a two-yard touchdown by Xavier Peters on Garden City's second possession. That extra point was good. Garden City led 13 to nothing with 7.22 to go in the first quarter. I think Garden City offensively kind of stalled out. They went three and out with a punt on their next drive. Then to end the quarter on their next drive after that, it was a turnover on downs in the red zone. Arkansas Baptist on the ensuing drive, a sack in the end zone for a safety by Arville Ferguson, made it 15-0 Garden City. Bronkbusters' next drive ended in four plays and a punt. Here's a play by Andrews, he's gonna throw it up the field to his receiver, it's Colin Chambers, he's in the middle of the field, taken down, he's not gonna get a first down, he gets past the original line of scrimmage by a couple yards. That'll set up a fourth and about seven. Arkansas Baptist. Hey, Garden City them. scored on their final drive here. They uh, went with a little middle screen in there. Almost looked like a tunnel screen or something. But Yancey will punt again. And back to receive is Garden City's Cameron LeBourne, wide receiver out of Norfolk, Virginia. High snap for Yancey who gets it off. This is the best punt of the night. Yep. Or the day, excuse me. Getting back and backwards pedaling it and then slipping on the ground at the 11 yard line is LeBourne. And with 11 seconds to go in the fourth, that's where Garden City will take over. There still must be some ice there from three weeks back. <laughs> yeah, I said fourth quarter, second quarter I meant. So just 11 seconds to go. I think you just kneel. Yeah. Garden City at their own 11 yard line. That's what they're gonna do. We'll, uh, Kneel the football and go into the halftime up 22 to zero. First down and 10 at the 11 yard line. Does it again. This time he's going around the complete field. So Yancey, the punter, is the. Guy must be on the cross country team. The kneel by Larson. Yeah, it seems like Yancey takes the longest way possible around the field to get back to his. And then he's going to have to cut across back. <laughs> the score, Garden City. So Garden City leads 22 to zero at the end of the first half. With all that running, he was bound to get off a great <laughs> kick. <laughs> was his best punt of the day. As uh, Arkansas Baptist goes three and out punts and then Garden City kneels to send the game into the halftime break. 22 to zero the lead for Garden City coming up here on the Morton Building Halftime Show. Take a look at that first half recap. Each of those first half stats. We'll take a look at that other game going on in the Jayhawk Conference between Dodge City and RPA College. And we'll look ahead towards the second half of action. You're listening to Bronx Buster Football on 99.9 The Rock. You always dream about owning your first house or car or business, but you also have
childhood nightmares. Introducing the May Only My Good Dreams Come True policy from American Family Insurance. Insure carefully, dream fearlessly. American Family Mutual Insurance Company, SI, and its operating company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin. For details, contact Neil Hawley, agent, at Neil Hawley Agency Incorporated. Call 620-275-6833 or stop by Logan to 5 East Kansas Plaza in Garden City today. You know, it's expensive to own your own rototiller, power rake, or aerator. And then where do you store those lawn and garden items when you're done with them? Garden True Value Rental has the answer. Rent all the items you want for all those lawn and garden jobs and let Garden True Value store them. If there's a repair problem, then Garden True Value will take care of it. Use that extra storage space in your garage or shed or other things and save your money by renting from Garden True Value. So buy what you want and rent what you need. Here at American Implement, we're proud to be part of the communities we serve. And that's the reason we support local youth through scholastic activities like FFA, 4-H band, and sports. We firmly believe that the right activity can bring out the best qualities every child has to offer. And we wholeheartedly want to support and be involved with that. It's part of our responsibility as a good neighbor. And we're proud to call your community our home also. Many say community banking is a dinosaur. They say that community banks can't keep up with the services and technology of the big banks. So what's your choice? Give up local, high-quality service and a vibrant business in your local community? Well, maybe. However, at Grant County Bank, you can have both the latest banking technology along with local experts who are also neighbors and friends. So log on or stop by one of our locations at gcbks.bank, 201 South Main in Ulysses, or 511 North Campus in Garden City. At the Heartland Cancer Center in Garden City, our patients are our top priority. It is the most advanced cancer center in the state. Chemotherapy, radiation therapy, financial counseling, and supportive services are all available under one roof. You will experience an unmatched quality level of care that combines our expert team of bilingual physicians and staff with the best technology available. I am Dr. Perez Tamayo. You deserve the best. Come see us today at Heartland Cancer Center in Garden City. Garden City Community College is proudly supporting the Bronkbusters to victory this school year, and they're assisting them to a victorious future. Find out all Garden City Community College has to offer. If you thought you couldn't afford college, or can't get funding for your kids, or yourself, well you can, and they can help. Visit Garden City Community College on Campus Drive in Garden City, or go online to gccks.edu for more information. Garden City Community College. Go Bronkbusters! Come home to the quality of a DNA charm. Why do you think we've asked the question, have you walked into a modular home lately and talked over the years of the way they are built, the installation values, and the efficiency of building your homes? It's because here at DNH Homes, we want to help you with the floor plan design, get every detail you want for you and your family, and make it just right for the future years to come. But for us to do that, I want you to stop by DNH Homes on East Highway 50 and let us actually show you the difference before you make that final decision. Moment of honesty. I know Garnan sets the bar as high as it goes. When it comes to cremation, they make a point of assuring that everything is done under their own roof, by their own professional staff, and in their own new state-of-the-art facility, and not farmed out to some off-site third-party crematory. So if I have to call on a funeral home, it'll be Garnan without question. Garnan Funeral Homes, serving all of Southwest Kansas. Welcome into the Morton Building Halftime Show. C.D. DeSalvo, John Ford here with me. And Justine back at the KWKR studio bringing you today's football game between Arkansas Baptist and the Garden City Community College Bronkbusters. First half recap is brought to you by Garden City Community College here on the Morton Building Halftime Show. To start the game, Garden City defense has been strong really all through the first half. Arkansas Baptist with a three and out. To start the game with negative three yards on that first drive. So Garden City gets the ball on the Arkansas Baptist. 39 after a bad punt by Arkansas Baptist. So Garden City's first possession. They go four plays, 39 yards, and score a touchdown on a one-yard touchdown run by John Ford. The extra point by uh, Jordan Ford. Excuse me. Wow. Uh, John Ford here in the booth. 
is, has not has no carries here today. Uh, six zero. The score after the extra point was uh, the snap was mishandled by Garden City. So six nothing. Arkansas Baptist goes three and out on their next possession. Garden City gets the ball back at the Arkansas Baptist 36 yard line with 9-10 to go in the first quarter. A two yard touchdown run by Xavier Peters. Made it 13 to zero, Bronkbusters. Extra point is good that time. Three plays, a minute 12, 36 yards on the drive for Garden City. Next possession for Arkansas Baptist. They go eight plays, 42 yards in three minutes and 15 seconds, but a turnover on downs gives Garden City the football back at the 4:03 mark of that first quarter. Garden City can't do anything with a possession though. They go three and out and punt it away after going just four yards. 60 yard punt though by Joe Carroll, and Arkansas Baptist got the ball back with three minutes to go in the first quarter at their own four-yard line. They go three and out and punt it away, and Garden City's offense gets the ball back on the Arkansas Baptist 17-yard line to start the second quarter. But again, Garden City's offense stalls out. Six plays, 13 yards, and they turn it over on downs inside the red zone. So Arkansas Baptist gets the possession back at their own four-yard line, but a... The sack in the end zone by Arvell Ferguson of Garden City it was good for a safety. Gave Garden City two points. They led 15 to zero with 12:58. Uh, excuse me, with 11 minutes to go in that second quarter. Then Garden City on the ensuing possession after the safety. Those four plays again. They punted away. Arkansas Baptist with the ball at their own 47-yard line. Those six plays, but just seven yards. Defense for Garden City, strong all day throughout. Arkansas Baptist has to punt it away again. And then Garden City with 5.43 to go in the second quarter, gets the ball back. This time a good possession, nine plays, 75 yards in four minutes and 14 seconds. Capped off by a three-yard touchdown run by Jordan Ford to make it 22-0 Bronkbusters. Arkansas Baptist gets the ball back with a minute 21 to go before halftime. They can't do anything with it. Three and out, they punt it away. Garden City kneels out the clock with 11 seconds to go in the half. To go into the halftime, leading 22 to zero. This is the Morton Building halftime show. We're going to take another break. When we come back, we'll have your first half stats for you. This is Brockbuster football on 99.9 The Rock. Good job on catching that football. You really took one for the team with that catch. Kind of like a bunch. No matter what is tossed away with vehicles that need fixed up, they always work as a team and get it done. Score for a and Body Shop. Hey, Harley, let's see if we can grab some after-game snacks. a and Body Shop, the shop in town. Over the car liner, baby. When it's time for your vehicle service work, take it to Lop Motors in Dodge City. The technicians at Lop Motors are ASC certified and factory trained. Enroll in their oil change package for most makes and models and pay only $25 plus tax on your oil change. This includes five quarts of non-synthetic oil and a full inspection of your vehicle. Put your family's safety in the hands of a service department who won't settle for anything less than the best. Lop Motors, your largest Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram truck dealer in all of Western Kansas under the great American flag in Dodge City. As a farmer or rancher, you know that agricultural land is not like other real estate. We know that too. Come see the experts in agriculture, American Ag Credit. Whether you're buying property, building, or making improvements, American Ag Credit is here to help with fixed rates, variable rates, long and short term loans. Unique solutions tailored to your unique needs. Visit us online at agloan.com. American Ag Credit, money for agriculture. With Kansas Farm Bureau Health Plans, you'll find affordable Medicare supplement coverage that helps cover certain out-of-pocket expenses Medicare doesn't cover. We encourage you to compare our rates. Contact a Farm Bureau Financial Services agent near you or visit kfbhealthplans.com. Medicare supplements insured by Members Health Insurance Company, Columbia, Tennessee. Not connected with or endorsed by the U.S. or state government. Who's ads for Steve Murray? We got it. We got it. Well, they do have it. Or they'll figure out a way for you to get it if possible. From the do-it-yourselfers to the experience, Steve Murray helps you find the products, help you complete your projects. From the farm to town, check with Steve Murray first before you make that purchase. And while you're there, browse on next door, under the same roof, and check out all the departments in Crazy House. Two great stores under one roof, one stop, and you are done. Steve Murray, North Campus Drive in Garden City. 
Keller Leopold story is one that's evolved over three generations of hard work and community partnerships. Long-standing relationships have been formed by the families they protected from tragedy and hardship. Share your story with Keller Leopold. Give them a chance to help you protect your family and your dreams. Keep your story alive for generations to come. Learn more at KellerLeopold.com. Whether you want to completely renovate your building or just need to repair your damaged doors, Morton Buildings has you covered. Morton Buildings has over 115 years of experience in the construction industry, which means we have completed a wide variety of repairs. And get this, even if it's not a Morton Building, we are happy to provide repairs on any of your building's needs. Contact your local Morton office today at 620-275-4105. United Wireless believes in delivering value to their customers and supporting our local communities. United continues to invest in their network, their people, and our communities here in Southwest Kansas. So when it's time to update your cell phone or get a new cell phone service, United Wireless will like the chance to earn your business. Switch to United Wireless today and join the United team in supporting Southwest Kansas. Find them online at unitedwireless.com. Back on the Morton Building Halftime Show. Garden City leading Arkansas Baptist 22-0 here at halftime. Uh, I just want to quickly mention here that our hearts go out to the Oklahoma Panhandle uh, State University Rodeo Team. The two members die in a two-vehicle accident uh, yesterday morning in southwest Kansas on their way here to the uh, Garden City Rodeo, which is taking place. Uh, flags here at Bronkbuster Stadium at half mass for that. Cinch Bullock and Hadley McCormick, both competitors on that Oklahoma Panhandle State University Rodeo team, uh, passing away yesterday. So just our hearts go out to that uh, school and to those families that were affected uh, by that here in southwest Kansas. Garden City with the 22 to 0 lead over Arkansas Baptist. Your First half stats are brought to you by Keller Leopold. Garden City, 14 first downs to four for Arkansas Baptist. 24 rushes for Garden City for 149 yards. 21 carries for just seven yards for Arkansas Baptist. Um, just 28 total offensive, uh, 12 yards on 28 plays for Arkansas Baptist. 30 plays for Garden City, 175 yards. Garden City just one for four on third down. Arkansas Baptist one of seven. Seven penalties for the Bronc Buster, 75 yards. Six penalties for 39 yards. Time of possession relatively even, 15.02 for Arkansas Baptist, 14.39 for Garden City. Uh, neither team with a turnover so far in this game. Individually for Arkansas Baptist, Cedric Andrews is Four for seven, passing for 19 yards. Six carries for Andre Barnes, no yards. Malik Goodall, eight carries for negative three yards. And Cedric Andrews, seven carries for negative four yards. One catch each for Colin Chambers, Demi uh, Dominic Wilcom Williams, and Malik Goodall and Adrian Brown for Arkansas Baptist. Eight receiving yards for Colin Chambers. Uh, defensively for Arkansas Baptist, four tackles, uh, six tackles for Darren Petty. He leads the way, four each for Jalen Sanders and Jezreel Judy. Four Garden City, Devin Larson's two for six for 26 yards. He's also got two carries for negative four yards. Jordan Ford leads the way, 19 carries, 132 yards. Three carries for Xavier Peters for 21 yards. Two touchdowns for Jordan Ford on the ground, one for Xavier Peters. One catch for Bryce Damas, 10 yards. Austin Simmons with one catch for 16 yards. Uh, defensively for Garden City. Leading the way is Christian Furman with four tackles. Two each for Arville Ferguson, Keelan Kennedy, Zay Roberson. Mark Robinson has two tackles and Jonathan Huggins has two tackles. One and a half sacks for Arville Ferguson. Two tackles for a loss for Ferguson. Two tackles for a loss. For Chris Furman, who have been stout for Garden City defensively, and John Ford, it's the Garden City defense 
that has been the MVP of this game so far. Absolutely. I mean, they're very impressive. I mean, from their front front four or front five to their to their uh, cornerbacks and safeties, I mean, they're incredible. Um, you know, you, at this early in the season, you, you hope that uh, – the ceiling is high for them getting better because if they get better, they are going to be, you know, and they stay away from injuries, they are going to be a good unit for sure. Yeah. Well, offensively for Garden City, they've kind of struggled at times. Um, obviously, the first two possessions were touchdowns, but, I mean, when you get the ball deep into enemy territory, that's usually what happens. But the possessions that didn't start off that well, um, Garden City's offense kind of stalled out a few times there in the first half. Yeah, and I think one of the things that happens is you become complacent after you get a big lead right off the bat. I think you kind of get complacent, almost get into a comfort zone, and I think that's where we hit a low. But then that last drive towards the end of the first half, I think picked us back up. We reestablished our rhythm. Several things that I noticed that, I mean, you got you to gotta ask yourself a question. What would happen if that quarterback got the snap right there where, you know, usually the level that he would hand the ball off to his backs at? In other words, there's a little bit of steam back there as it goes back rather than him always having to jump and gather it. Because to me, that throws the timing of the play off. And, you know, that's timing that's going to be valuable as far as element of surprise and quite honestly when we get to Butler and when we get to Independence and when we get to, to Hutchinson. I mean, that timing has got to be there in order for us to really compete at our highest level. Uh, scoreboard says 22-0. to zero. I know one of your keys to the victory in, at the beginning of the game was to not look at the scoreboard. Um, but you've, as much as you've dominated this Arkansas Baptist team, especially defensively, how do you kind of start this game over and not have that in the back of your mind that you're playing so well right now. Well, I think, you know, the heck with the score. Let's build on what we've done so far. I mean, we've had consistency on defense. We've played hard. Offensively, you can tell we, we started out the game playing hard. We hit that low. So their consistency fell off. Now we reestablish it toward the end of the first half. So let's keep it going. We ended the first half on a good note offensively. So what you do is you take that since that was the last thing you know, and build on it. We'll see if Garden City can build on that. Arkansas Baptist, John Ford, uh, how do you get the offense going? I mean, it's only seven yards on 20-something plays. It seems like Garden City's in the backfield consistently. They've had a couple drives that showed some promise, especially after penalties by Garden City's defense, but... What do they talk about here at the halftime yeah. of their offense going? With all due respect to Arkansas Baptist, I've been here for 39 years, and I never knew that school existed <laughs> in junior college football. And that's with all due respect because I didn't know. And they probably did, but I didn't know it. Um, but you can tell that what they're trying to do is they're trying to establish a program like Garden City Scott. And in order to do that, you have to – you have to bite off the big dogs and, and take them on. Which they will so, do this year. Yeah. And so I think what you'd tell them is, you know what? Hey, we competed that first half. This score could have been a lot worse, but you know what? Because we competed, because we kept our energy level high, because we made some good plays on defense, hey, we were, you know what? That's something we can look as a positive, and let's build on that. It's just a three-score game. Yeah. I mean, a stop here and then a score. And Listen, in junior college football, Three scores is nothing, yeah. man. Well, uh, in Dodge City, kind of a different story. Garden City's uh, Dodge City, excuse me, is up 30 to zero on RPA College at halftime. Uh, so Dodge City in full control. And there's okay. another, another, another. I don't know if they're a college or what academy, yeah. but I've never heard of them. So, it, you know, I. I I think Arkansas Baptist is doing the right thing by, you know, improving the schedule and taking on one of the best conferences in the nation when it comes to junior college football. How can you go wrong with that? And then, then to bite off some of the, uh, uh, I think they're, they're playing, uh, what, Ellsworth? They're playing all the Iowa schools, which is a plus because, I mean, they're so doggone tough. I think Arkansas Baptist is, I mean, they're, they're really starting to, you know, trying to juice their program up a little bit. And I think that's a good recruiting, too. 
because I don't know what their campus is like. I bet you it's a beautiful campus. And so you, you combine that with, you know, saying, hey, we're going to play top-notch level competition in football. Hey, that, that, that all of a sudden becomes a recruiting device for them. And so. Uh, and look, the first game here for Garden City is, and Dodge City, it's not like Butler taking on Indy last night and Coffeeville and Hutch facing off. But, you know, Tom Minnick wasn't afraid to play, to, afraid to play Snow College last uh, in 2019 right here at home, a ranked team that they lost to yeah. on a field goal. Uh, so you get, you know, Arkansas Baptist to start the season off. It's not Butler. It's not Hutch. It's not a, a Jayhawk school. But uh, you get to, a chance to kind of figure out who you are and what you do well here against Arkansas Baptist. And, you know, Garden City can continue to do that here in the second half. You know, another thing, when you have a when you have a, a face-off like Butler and Independence right off the bat, yeah. it's almost like you have to be in mid-season four right. to yeah. compete at that, to, you know, to be a, have a competitive game. And unfortunately for Butler, they fell down 17-0, and even though they came back in that game, the energy it took to come back and, and – overcome their slow start really hurt them at the end of that one and, was and then they play played hutch next uh, that was at indy hey, at indy indy's a tough place to play here's the kickoff by yancey to start the second half for garden city ball's taken by keelan kennedy inside the 15 at about the 14 he's going to take it over here on the near side he's forced out of bounds past the 30 to about the 32 yard line i think the real key the rest of the way is build on our successes and stay away from injuries now So Garden City will take over on their own 32-yard line. As we start the uh, second half of action here, Garden City up 22-0. I want to thank you for joining us. If you're listening on the radio, 99.9 The Rock, or on the KWKR app, or on TuneIn, Apple Music. If you're watching on YouTube, I want to thank you for joining us as well. I want to thank the wonderful crew here at Garden City Community College for this stream. Uh, to be able to watch the game here online. Here's a handoff to Jordan Ford, a stiff arm. Now he's at the 40, the 45, 50, cutting back towards the middle of the field, 40, the 45, and he is Ooh. ran down and hit hard by Deshaun Tolfrey at about the 30-yard line, kind of blindsided. I'll tell you what, that, didn't was see a, him. that was a concussion waiting to happen, man. And Jordan Holy Ford will slowly walk off the field after the big gain. Did you see his head bounce off the field? Yeah. <laughs> Holy smokes. That can't feel good for no. Jordan Ford. Big gain, though, by the running back. And, boy, his head hit the turf hard. Yeah, I mean, that's that's something as a coach and as trainers you want to watch because that boy's health is everything. Ball in the near hash after the big gain by Ford. Here's a handoff now to the other back. And we're getting wrapped up and taken down at the 31-yard line. That is... I'm waiting to see a number for Garden City. That it's is like Damian Hodges. Yeah. So Damian Hodges, 5'7", 185-pound redshirt freshman out of Carroll Stream, Illinois. With the uh, backup that spells Jordan Ford. And he remains in the football game. Two receivers right, one to the left for Devin Larson. Larson in the shotgun gets a snap. Here's Hodges on a carry up the middle, and he pushes forward and dives forward past the 25. They're going to call him down at the 25. That inside option, they are having a lot of success with. And now Hodges will come out. He's to the 25-yard line, which brings up third down and one. Uh, Ford, uh, Jordan Ford still not in the game. I'd take a long look at him before I put him back in the game because, yeah. like I said, that kid's health is everything, and last thing you want to do is jeopardize it. But Xavier Peters now. That was a 36-yard rush for Jordan Ford, by the way, on the play he got injured on. Here's the snap, handoff to Xavier Peters, and Peters going to get taken out at the 25. Almost looked for a second like Larson kept it, and he would have had some room. Oh, my gosh, he might have scored. <laughs> So you can bet. I don't know if uh, <laughs> does Coach Minnick want to put that on film yet. <laughs> uh, well, we saw Nate Cox, who was extremely tall. Well, he's six nine. Oh yeah, and the guy. Every step he he took, it was about three or four yards. It looked slow, but like you said, his glide. Yeah, yeah. like a freaking giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> Nate Cox, the University of Nevada. After that season with Gordon City, here's the uh, Larson 
on the snap, turns around, hands it off to Ford. Ford up the middle. He's got some room. He's finally taken down and wrapped up from behind. That's LeKedrick Holmes on the tackle. And if not for Holmes taking him down from behind, it probably would have been a touchdown for yeah. Jordan Ford. It's good to see him back out there, for sure. First down carry for Jordan Ford to the 19-yard line and a fresh set of downs for Garden City. And Ford is going to come back off the field. <laughs> But not after he makes the first down gesture. So Hodges <laughs> will check back in. Two receivers left, one to the right for the quarterback Larson in the shotgun. Hard count again. And he almost got him offside. Okay. Now here is the snap. Here's Hodges on a carry. Hodges just shifty, just like Jordan Ford. They very similar looking backs. And Hodges showing his shiftiness getting positive yardage for about five or six yards. It looks like, I mean, it's obviously inside option, but boy, it looks like they're trapping the crap out of those interior defensive linemen. Now, let's be honest, it's Isaiah Adams, Monte DeCour, Carter Habick, Dave DeSam Sapa, and Basa Belenganaye that have been huge yes. for Garden City on that offensive line here. Case of 13 yard line, which will bring up second down and four. And usually you don't see a lot of substitutions on the offensive line, but there have been some here for yeah. Garden City just to keep them fresh. Well, and create depth. Yeah, and you've got guys that can play the position. Look here at that snap. Is the, it was a late handoff because of the timing, like you said, to Davion Hodges and not, in fact, a loss of a couple for Garden City on the play. I don't know if I, <laughs> I never coached football, but if I was a football coach, that would hack me off. Because it's just not smooth. I mean, you see it, it, it throws the timing off. So this will set up a third and six for Garden City. And they do have a new center in the game. It's not the starting center that it was. Here's the <laughs> snap and a pass, a slant. Towards the middle of the field to LeBourne and a catch inside the 10. LeBourne taken down right after he makes the snag. Now that potentially could be something really to look forward to because that was a very tight window that he threw into. And Larson did a great job doing it. No, it is Carter Habick that is the offensive uh, center. I was mistaken. So. Habeck still trying to get that uh, snap down with his quarterback. It's going to take some snaps and some reps. Is. Receivers on either side as well as backs on either side for Larson. Back to his left and back to his right. Looking right now, floating it to the left. It's a jump ball that is caught in the end zone by Jarman Chanu. Touchdown, Broadbusters. And Garden City pushes the lead to 28 with 10-11 to go here in the third quarter. The defensive backs back there for uh, Arkansas Baptist, they're yelling for interference, offensive interference. There was no way that was offensive interference. That defensive back did everything but take the clothes off our receiver. Uh, John and Chanel, 6'4", 205 receiver from Chandler, Arizona on the reception. Here's the extra point that is up and good. By Joe Carroll's the sun comes back out of the clouds here at Brockbuster Stadium. 10-11 to go in the third. It's 29-0 for the black and yellow. That play, 10 play drive. How about that for Garden City to start off the third quarter? That's building on what we left off with in the first half. So, you know, really, really well designed drive and execution was outstanding. The only thing that gripes me is that doggone snap. I think that'll. <laughs> it's going to keep you up tonight. Oh, it? my goodness, it is. 10 plays, 5 minutes, 67 yards for Garden City as they take the 29 to zero lead. Here's a low kickoff that is fielded by one of the up men. And then coming up to make the tackle, a beautiful play made by Tyrese Gibson Battles. What a tackle. 
You know what? That must be by design, them kicking that, that way, you know? I'm just wondering if that's not by design. I mean, after all, they've done it four straight times, right? So, it's got to be. So, Arkansas Baptist will take over at their own 30-yard line after the return by Larry Smith. Here's the snap, it's through the hands of Andrews. He picks it up, now he's gonna roll to his right, and it's a fumble, picked up by Garden City with it on the near side on the Brownbusters. They're gonna score! It's Chris Smith for Garden City with the scoop and score, and the Brownbusters score on defense. Wow. Chris Smith with a scoop and score, touchdown, Defense just picks up where we left off, huh? I mean, that was awesome. So it's now 35 to zero. Garden City has blown this game wide open. Well, it started with the mishandle on the snap by Andrews. And then I didn't see who knocked it out or who was chasing him from behind, but then he lost the handle and it fell right into the hands of Garden City's Chris Smith, the 6'2", 200 pound sophomore, took it all the way back to the house for a touchdown. You know what, I think it might've been that Battles Gibson they, they made that nice tackle on that kickoff because he was he was pursuing him, then he dropped the ball, and then he came back and hit him and dislodged it again. Here's the snap, the hold, the kick is good by Joe Carroll. I gotta tell you, he had to be Houdini to get that one through there because <laughs> that defense was right on top of it, man. I don't know how he did that. Now 36 to zero the score after the fumble and return by Smith. Now the great thing about this is that Coach Manning's going to have an excellent chance to develop some depth now. You know, because he's going to get to play some second line players that normally you wouldn't get to play in if you're playing a Butler or a Hutchinson right off the bat or Snow College. So Garden City will kick off again. Garden City who scored 13 points in the first quarter and nine in the second. Already has 14 here in the second half. Carroll to kick off, and it's going to be an onside kick, and it's on the ground. Garden City recovers it. And they caught Arkansas Baptist off guard, a squib kick by Joe Carroll, and Garden City jumps back on it. The route is on. There's nothing to talk about. That was as clean as it could be. Boy, what a kick by Joe Carroll. Yeah. Went to 10 yards. Arkansas Baptist not expecting it with the Bronx Busters up by 36. And once again, I, I, you know, it's all by design. I bet you, hey, you put this on tape. Now, now other, other teams have to start planning for it. And that can uh, neutralize a lot of things on your kickoff return. Yeah, softball score, didn't you, a second ago? Yes, got a score from Tangerman Complex. Uh, Garden City softball team won 10-0 over Barton Community College. Garden now improves to 13-10 overall in the year, and they're 6-2 in the conference. They are playing well. They had a kid that was an NJCAA player of the week. So, you know, things are looking up for Coach Schmeckpepper and her squad. A reminder also that Garden City Bronkbuster basketball in action at Hutchinson tonight, 5.30 and 7.30, women game first, men's game second. That game could be, those games could be heard here on 99.9 The Rock following this game here at Bronkbuster Stadium. Garden City leads 36 to zero. So starters still out there for the Bronkbusters. Yeah, I imagine they're going to keep it on the ground here. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't. I would. I'd be steady Eddie right here now. Arkansas Baptist has run one offensive play here in the third quarter, and it was a fumble return for a touchdown by Garden City. Here's Larson to turn around. They don't run it. They're going to pass. Larson launches it down the field into double coverage, and it's caught! It is caught by Austin Simmons. Wow. Against the wind, mind you. Against the wind. 
while getting hit yes. into double coverage, a jump ball, and Austin Simmons comes up with it. Uh, if, if you're not out here, I hope you all will have a chance to come watch the Busters play. This quarterback is pretty doggone good. By far the biggest pass play of the day for Larson. And now it's first and goal from the 10. After the big catch, Larson back to pass. He's gonna throw the fade on the far side. It's in the end zone! Touchdown, Gordon City. Simmons on the catch on the far back pylon. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Jeez. I mean, what a throw. Yep. That was a great throw. Great catch. Larson to Simmons. Garden City has blown this game open here in the third. 42-0 the lead. Snap, hold, Carroll's kick is good. No good. So it'll stay 42 to 0. So big pass play from Larson to Simmons and then capped off by the three yard fade pass to the back corner pylon. Simmons comes down with it. Garden City scores quickly again. Two plays. 50 yards in 47 seconds. Okay, I got a score from the uh, softball game. In the second game, it's 3-0 Garden City in the top of the second inning. couple of reminders. Number nine, Indy defeated Butler 31 to 24 yesterday. And then Hutch defeated Coffeyville 33 to 10 as Arkansas Baptist falls on that squib kick by Garden City. Uh, we got a flag. And then a late flag Somebody coming. Somebody did. It's probably on us because we said something. Maybe not. Uh, pointing towards Garden, I don't know if that means anything, but Let's see what it is here. Personal foul, personal foul on Keelan Kennedy, who hit the push-ups and now runs off the field. Yep. So Arkansas Baptist offense will take the field. If Ran one play here in the third quarter. It was a fumble return for a touchdown. Their own 43 with 9.06 to go in the third. Here's a handoff. Malik Goodall shaking some defenders. Nice carry up the middle. He's finally taken down after a gain of about six. Good hard run by Goodall. Garden City's Darius Johnson making the tackle. Malik Goodall, the ball carrier. It looked like we could have thrown him for a loss, but the tackler ducked his head before he did see what he was tackling. So nice gain on first down by Arkansas Baptist, 8.40 to go in the third. I think in baseball that's called a whiff. <laughs> I think you're right. Pistol formation, snap to Andrews, handoff, good all left side. And he's going nowhere. A loss of a couple on that play. There was no whiff there. <laughs> no, there was not. And Darius Johnson, one of the first ones there. Yeah. Got something going on here. Darius Johnson out of Spokane, Washington. 6'3", 290-pound sophomore. Was on this team in 2019. Now it's third and long for Arkansas Baptist. Also, two of them will even bring up third down to six. One receiver, excuse me, two receivers to the right, none to the left for Andrews. Andrews going to drop back. He's hit while he throws it, but wide open on a catch, and he's going to score is Andre Barnes. No blockbuster was covering him on the far side, and it's a touchdown for Arkansas Baptist in a defensive breakdown 
for Coach Jerry Dominguez's defense. Boy, Andre Barnes just snuck out of the backfield, and Andrews took a lick. Yeah, it looked like he ran a wheel route, and uh, and I'll tell you what, you got to give uh, uh, Andrews uh, credit because he got he got yeah. slobber knocked on that throw. Here's the extra point that is blocked by Garden City, and on the return, Furman getting it tackled. That might be the biggest kicker. <laughs> So, Arkansas Baptist gets on the board. They get six points. Got to give Arkansas Baptist and, and uh, Andrews credit. I mean, they're not quitting. Yeah. And that's part of part of filming a winning team right there is no quit. Well, and how about the play call by the offense there for Arkansas Baptist? Yep. This game made possible by Grant County Bank, Central Care Cancer Center, Garnan Funeral Home, and Wheatland Electric Broadband. CD, I, I finally found 42. He's out there kicking off. <laughs> he's, he's, he's sort of like my Waldo with this football game. <laughs> well, Devin Larson, now 6 of 10 for 91 yards and two touchdowns for Garden City. Oh, that was a nice kick. Wind may have got some of that one as it goes out of the back of the end zone. Yeah, let's see if he's going to go. If he's going to go to Phoenix by way of Jetmore. Nope, he's yeah. ran straight off the field. I don't know <laughs> why he was doing that earlier. He was discombobulated or what? <laughs> <laughs> well, he would run to the opposite side of the field and then make his way to the sideline. He, he wouldn't just run straight off the field. It was strange. And I don't know if that's just a ritual maybe he has or a I don't know. Super I'll tell you what, the, the funny part was when at the end of the first half, he's running all the way around, got to his bench, and his bench is already caused a miracle. <laughs> first, uh, here's David Hodges, who is met, wrapped up, and taken down right away. That's a nice tackle there by number 44, Jasper Earls. Now, if you're the Arkansas Baptist coach, those are two successful plays you've had in a row. You scored a touchdown and you've just had a nice tackle. An Arkansas Baptist drive was three plays, minute 25, 57 yards. There's a handoff, Xavier Peters, and he's taken down immediately. Boy, coming up to making the tackle, Ron yes. Klump, 5'8", 185-pound freshman. Do we have some second-line uh, offensive linemen in there right now? That's a good question. I don't 77. think so. No, Decor is still in there. I have the numbers wrong on my sheet, just so you know. Oh. Uh -oh. Those are. Oh, I'm just. Right. <laughs> but it is still the starting offensive line for, yeah. Yeah. for Garden City. Six and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. 42 to six, Garden City. Here's the snap to Larson, who drops back. Now he's going to roll to his right. Rolling to his right, throwing on the run, and a pass through the hands of Simmons. Incomplete. Fourth down now, and a punt for Garden City coming. It'll bring a fourth down at 13. So a three and out for Garden City. Yeah. Joe Carroll will punt it away. Andre Barnes, the third, back to receive. Joe Carroll back to punt. He had a 60-yarder earlier today. Let's face it, Austin Simmons should have made that catch, though. Yeah. I mean, as good as he's played, I mean, he should have made that catch. 6.15 to go here in the third. Barnes City with a commanding lead, but punting here. Barnes is back to receive the kick. Here is the punt. Bounces just before the 50. Now we'll roll into the inside the 45 to the 44. And that's where Arkansas Baptist will take over. The old rugby style kicking. He's been fairly successful with it. I don't think he did that on that first punt that rolled uh, 60 yards. Well, Garden City goes three and out on that possession. 
Just three plays. Now Arkansas Baptist will take over at their own 45. Five successful plays now for Arkansas Baptist. There you go. Trying to get right in a row. They're trying to get things rolling here. Yeah. It's 59 degrees now as it warms up on the field. Here's Andrews avoiding two sacks. Now he's going to throw it left, and it hits the chest pad of his intended receiver, Goodall. It completes as it hits the ground. Well, Andrews with some shifty moves there. Yeah. You know, I venture to guess he's going to be pretty good by the end of the year. Coming up on the six-minute mark of the third quarter, a commanding lead for the Bronc Busters. I mean, the kid's only a freshman. I mean. Here's Andrews on a pass. It's through the hands of his intended receiver, a zinger. Yeah. Fastball uh, through the hands of Colin Chambers. Incomplete third down. Chambers got to make that catch. Garden City scored on a eight-yard touchdown to Jarman Cheneau to start the quarter. Then a three-yard pass from Larson to Simmons. And also a fumble recovery for a touchdown, 30-yard return. Here's a shovel pass to Goodall in the middle of the field, and he is wrapped up and taken down. The Bronc Buster's all over that. Chris Furman, one of those there to make the tackle. Fourth and long still, about fourth and eight here for Arkansas Baptist. Gain of three on the play, bring up fourth down to seven. I think they're going to punt again. Yes, they are. Rashad Yancey to punt for Arkansas Baptist. It's our man number 42. Yeah, it is. Well, Bourne stands at the 20-yard line for Garden City. Yancey gets it off. That's a good punt. His best one today. It's off the hands of LeBourne, who gets it back at the 7. A shifty move. He's still on his feet at the 20. Now he's going to get to the 25. What about the 26? Nice moves from LeBourne. And Garden City will take back over. <laughs> 42, directly to the bench. Somebody might have said something to him. <laughs> well, now he knows how to get there the quickest way. Yeah. 5.06 to go in the third quarter. Garden City retakes possession here at the 27. The 42-6 lead. Larson still in the game, still starters. Forward to his right. Two receivers right, one to the left. Here's Larson going to keep it this Larson time. Larson keeps it. Larson yeah. with a nice gain of about five. Devin Larson, the ball carrier. In the middle of the field as they getting checked in the tent right now is Kevin Ab Abrams for Wayne, defensive end for Garden City. He's the 32 yard getting line looked over. Five. five yard gain for Larson on his first carry. It's nice to be able to say they have a tent. Because, boy, in the beginning of the game, it didn't look like they were ever going to get that thing. And it was so a lot windier when they yeah. were trying to set it up. thing almost became a kite. <laughs> but it's, uh, they got it up. Yep. Looks good. Four and a half minutes to go in the third. Two receivers right, one to the left. Here's a high snap for Larson. Hands it off to Peters. Peters up the middle. Oh, and he takes a shot. A big shot from Hakeem Dillard. And then Peters gets up and gives him the first down signal. So... Peters, who's used to giving those hits, takes one, but he pops right back up, and a first down for Garden City. Ball at the 40. Well, I've been kind of impressed with him. Yeah. Well, how about that? Answer the call. You know, you're, you're a defensive player. You come here to Garden City, and their the coaching staff tells you they want you to run the football, and... You had a touchdown here today. Remember when we won the national championship, Jeremy Falk was playing in the backfield for us. Here's a handoff. Peters again shakes off a defender, but then he's wrapped up and taken down at the line of scrimmage. No game. That, that uh, play, to quote a popular phrase from Spider-Man, was going nowhere. <laughs> and Earls, Jasper Earls on the tackle. Peters will come out of the game now. 3.40 to go in the third. It's been a long third quarter. 
Garden City's got three touchdowns out of this quarter. Arkansas Baptist has their first score in this quarter as well. Three receivers to the left, one to the right for Larson in the shotgun. Ball in the far hash at the 40. Larson, short drop back, a throw to, in the middle of the field, a slant route to McColvin's son. That was a tight window. Yeah. <laughs> this kid this kid may be the deal, man. McColvin's son's first catch. Son of 5'10", 175-pound freshman out of New Iberia, Louisiana. Getting a, getting a catch there on the slant route. Larson does, he just looks confident. He stands tall in yeah. the pocket. I think that's the most important thing. He's, that, his, he's not rushed, it seems like, when he's back there. Uh, backs to either side of Larson now. In motion, goes forward from right to left. Here's a handoff, Peters. Peters right up the gut, and he's going to gain five yards on first down. I like what Garden's doing now. They're not, you know, they're just kind of chipping away. Yeah, this is your typical Randy Orthman offense. Well, the great thing is you're getting plays on film so that they can get better by watching them and perfect certain things that maybe they didn't do well during the play. Well, you run behind your offensive line and you're blocking up front, but you still let your quarterback Dink and dunk a little bit and even take a couple shots in this game. High snap, hand off to Hodges. Hodges patiently waiting for a hole to develop. It never does, and he's wrapped up and taken down the far side after a loss of about a half yard. Hodges is very shifty too, isn't he? Yeah. And him and Jordan Ford are pretty similar. It seems yeah. Like. Orthman sing signals in the play to Larson. I think the difference between Ford in, is the fact that uh, um, he maybe got a lot bit more experience because yeah, he gets through the hole. He gets through the hole. That was perfectly said. It does look like Ford has more experience when he's running the football. Snap to Larson. Larson throws it in the middle of the field. It's uh, Damus, the tight end, with the catch. And another, he gets a snap, and Larson points his shoulders to where he's going to throw and delivers a strike. Bryce Damis with a first down catch to the 34-yard line. You know, by staggering your count, too, it really gives you a chance to make a check at the line if you have to, based on maybe a false movement that the defense makes in their secondary or their, their linebacking crew. And because the defensive line can't get off a quick start because of the hard count from earlier, you get a little bit more time. Yeah, it's a, it, it, it. forward on a carry up the middle. And Ford's going to push forward for about four yards. So he develops a pile in the middle field. Jalen Sanders isn't chirping as much, but I got to tell you, that kid's, he's a player. He plays good. Yeah, he, he's a player, for sure. He plays with passion. You can never fault that. Final 30 seconds here of the third quarter. Garden City with a 42-6 to lead driving here. The ball is now in the 31-yard line of Arkansas Baptist. I think this is the ninth play of the drive here for Garden City. Two receivers right, one to the left. Larson with the snap. Hand off. No, it's a keeper, Larson. Larson up the middle. Just dives forward. A late fumble. Yeah, they're going to say he was down. I think that's a good call. I do too. It seemed like he was down for a while. And Garden City will keep possession here. Arkansas Baptist was pretty certain they got a fumble. <laughs> yeah. Larson. When he turned Burks. around, he's, he realized, uh oh. That's the end of the third quarter. Garden City with a 42 6 lead by the fourth and final period coming up when we return. This is Bronc Buster Football on 99.9 The Rock. 
Propane heats our homes and shops, can supplement irrigation engines. And did you know that you can order a new vehicle fitted to operate on propane? Garden City Propane is a local, family-owned company that can help you maximize your fuel dollars with safe and affordable options. They have tanks, can get parts, and provide reliable delivery by people that have lived here and been in the business for years. So, you never have to worry. Contact Garden City Propane today to find out more. Hi, this is Tony Wheel with Hydro Resources. Now is an excellent time for maintenance, repair, or changes to your water well and pumping system. Was your pump vibrating, pumping air, down in capacity, pumping some sand, or not efficient? Has it been several years since it was serviced? Have it worked on now during the off season so you're ready for next spring? Don't wait. Call the professionals at Hydro Resources at 620-277-2389 to discuss your needs. Back at Bronkbuster Stadium, C.D. DeSalvo here along with John Ford as Garden City holds on to a 42-6 lead as we begin the fourth and final period. Garden City getting set to run their 10th play of this drive from the 31-yard line of Arkansas Baptist. It's third and one. Larson with the snap. It's high. Hands it off the middle. And it's Xavier <laughs> Peters who has popped again but gets right back up. And Peters... To the 19-yard line for a first down. I don't know who that hurts more, the defense or the offense. Well, you know what? I think he not only received, but he gave away. <laughs> yeah. <one. laughs> See, I was going to say, what a beautiful afternoon. I mean, you got these white blue clouds above us, and I mean, geez. Awesome. It has been a beautiful afternoon. Perfect football weather, even though it is springtime here in southwest Kansas. Two receivers left, two to the right for Larson now. First and 10. First down marker at the nine yard line. Here is a keeper by Larson who spins out of a tackle. Now he is gonna get wrapped up and taken down, but makes something out of nothing as he gets to the 15. Gain of four. Arkansas Baptist had good penetration on that play and blew up that play. So Larson was kind of, hey, I'm gonna make the best out of this. And he did. Play number 12 now in this drive for Garden City. And this is the prototypical, if, if Coach Tom Minnick and Randy Orthman could come up with a perfect offensive possession, it would always be yeah. this kind. Time-consuming yeah. and result a score. First downs on third down. Like you said, time-consuming, chewing up yardage on the ground. A couple pass plays sprinkled in there as well. Quarterback runs. There's a turnaround handoff to Peters. Peters on the right side, near side, inside the 10, and finally forced out of bounds out of necessity just because he ran out of room <laughs> by the Arkansas Baptist uh, Buffaloes. So, I don't know what you think, but I think probably after this offensive series, they would take uh, 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 Larson out. Yeah. I See mean, what, uh, Mike Irwin can do. Yeah, because I think. Uh, But, you know, we heard, as Garden City runs up to the line of scrimmage, we heard Coach Tom Minnick talk about Devin Larson. Yeah. And how he surprised everyone coming here to Garden City, and he has surprised us here today. Here's Ford up the middle. Ford getting it wrapped up and taken down. Just prior to the goal line, he's down about the two or the one. CD, I got the impression as he was talking about Larson that he – Larson may have been the best quarterback he's ever had. Yeah, it sounded yeah. that way. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, it's going to be interesting as the season goes if he still believes that because if that's the case, then, you know, he's had a lot of great teams with a lot of great quarterbacks. That, that could be a good sign for Garden City. Well, a great and efficient showing for Larson, who is yeah. now out of the game. Simmons will run the Wildcat for Garden City. Here's a snap to Simmons, gets a screen from Peters, touchdown. Bronk Busters. From two yards out, Austin Simmons scores on a rush. And Garden City now leads 48 to six. You could have run through that whole CD. Maybe. <laughs> I'd still be running though, how slow I am. <laughs> Capping off the drive for Garden City. And pending this extra point. By the Bronc Busters. How about this, John Ford? 14 plays, 8 minutes. 
Uh, hey, that's what you call a good drive right there. And the kick is up and good. It's 49 to six now. The lead for the Bronc Busters. They've blown this game open here in the second half. Two touchdowns, three touchdowns by the offense, two by Austin Simmons. And a scoop and score by Chris Smith of Garden City. And Garden City looks like they're gonna be 1-0 to start the year. I'll tell you what, the thing I like about Coach Minnick is, you know what, he, he, it's like, I'm not gonna worry about things because you know what, if we do our job right, things are gonna be fine. Yeah. And, and boy, that, that, that is really a solid philosophy. Yeah. You know what's important, too, is it looks like they're having fun out there. Yes. They haven't played football. A lot of these players haven't played football in a long time. Yeah. And, you know, having fun out there with a big victory. Yep. It's huge for this team. Here's the kickoff. A deep kickoff by Carroll out of the back of the end zone with the wind. Where in the same hill has that been? <laughs> well... <laughs> With all due respect, it, it was worth the win. Yeah. Well, they've been squib kicking all day. Yeah, so you know, it was by design now. Yeah. I'll tell you what, looking at Garden City Athletics now, uh, the football team on an upswing, the softball team's on an upswing. Really impressed with both basketball programs and the coaching that they get. And now, uh, the volleyball program is really picking up. Yeah. The atmosphere, when you go to a volleyball game now at Garden City Community College, I mean, those games are fun. And those kids compete. Patrick Hills has done a wonderful job with that team. Considering where it was yes. a couple seasons ago. It's amazing. Here's Andrews on a turnaround handoff. Barnes is met before the line of scrimmage and taken down by uh, Miley Wembley. And how cool is it the fact that he's taking a lot of Southwest Kansas kids yes. and doing this? I mean, that is, that, that's awesome. Well, convincing one of them to stay yes. and not go to Nebraska was huge, too. Yeah, that was. But I'll tell you what, the other two have stepped up really yes. well. And then we got another one coming in next year with Calzanetti. And so I'll tell you what, yeah, it's, I'm telling you, they're, they're just going to get better and better. Patrick's doing a great job. There's a turnaround handoff, Barnes. Barnes far side, getting the edge. A nice pickup by Barnes before he's forced out of bounds. On that far side for Arkansas Baptist, coming up an 11 and a half minute mark of this opening quarter. So nice to, you know, come to a football game, and I mean, the crowd's having a nice time, and the kids are all down there having a good time. I mean, it's just a, uh, an atmosphere that I've missed <laughs> over the last year. Absolutely. And guess what? We get to do it again for the next two weeks. Can't wait, man. Fort Scott coming to town and then Highland coming to town next two weekends. Both those games at 1 p.m. here on 99.9. The Rock, Barnes gonna get run down on the far side before the line of scrimmage. Arvell Ferguson, one of the first Bronc Busters there. Well, the great thing about the next two weeks, well, in fact, the rest of the season, man, is we get to reassemble the crew. Yes. We'll have Michael back here and, I mean, it's always fun. We got Adam wandering around taking photos. And I got to say, to be up here out of the wind. You like it, don't you? <laughs> kind of got spoiled this first game. <laughs> so, so you basically are saying, Ford, you're on the sideline next week. <laughs> <laughs> no, I uh, I miss being on the sideline. You hear the sounds of the game. Uh, you do a great job, too. So it's going to be a punt now for Arkansas Baptist. This is Arshad Yancey, our boy, to punt it off here. And whistles. No. Arkansas Baptist coach can't be happy about that. Back but this is the type of thing that happens the first game. you got your punt teams that sometimes the message gets mixed up with the people that are on there. Or perhaps an injury has occurred, and they didn't know who the second-line player was to come in and replace them. And so, you know. Arkansas Baptist, just one of three home games next week as they take on Ellsworth. 
Uh, that was blocked. Bad punt that might have been blocked. That's going to roll be backwards. Easy. Interesting to see where 42 well, goes. 24 yard line, about a one or two yard punt for Arkansas Baptist. I think we're going to have a. I think we're going to have a change of quarterback. Yep, we are. Garden City will take over on the Arkansas Baptist 24, and it is a change at quarterback. Mike Irwin, 6'1", 200-pound redshirt, sophomore into the game for Garden City out of Sherwood, Oregon. He was at the University of Oregon before transferring. He's from Lake Ridge High School. In that pistol formation is Irwin. Here's a snap, a turnaround handoff to Hodges. Hodges up the middle, looking for the right side and some daylight before he's taken down at the 19. That was a really good run by Hodges. He looked like he broke through a couple tackles. He's super quick. He's just like Ford. Yeah. You know, just without the experience. I'll ask you what you think of the putting Xavier Peters in at running back. Gosh, I like it. I like it a lot. So you got some speed and shiftiness, and then you got power and just a bull rush. Yes, you, you got the power, and then you got the speed. I mean, <laughs> I think it's a great combination. Absolutely. And it, it opens up the playbook. A lot of things you could do with those two yep. in the backfield. Here's a handoff on the left side. First down. The carrier, I believe, I didn't see who it was. And then add to that, you got a fantastic quarterback, and all of a sudden, you know, you just hope that offensive line stays healthy because the potential is unlimited. And Martez Jones. Martez Jones is the long snapper, and now he's the running back. First down, Garden City. First and goal from the 10. Snap high. Irwin going to keep it this time. And what could have been disastrous actually turns into a good gain of about three or four yards as he falls forward for a positive gain. Boy, when you got a kid that can play multiple positions like that, are you getting banged for your buck on the yeah. scholarship? Holy cow. Well, especially in a COVID year. Yes, yes. You might be requiring more of some players. Yep. And Joe Carroll, the kicker, punter, place kicker. He's also listed as a wide receiver. So, Oh, my goodness. <laughs> There's that as well. Jeez. Arkansas Baptist doesn't get any easier after Ellsworth. They got Hutch on the road and then Iowa Western at home. Yeah. Number one and number two. Here's Hodges up the middle into the end zone. Touchdown from eight yards. Damian Hodges. And Garden City. Now at 55 to six. <laughs> Ford and Hodges, <laughs> mid and mid air. <laughs> it's a nice run by Hodges. Yep. You just hope this enthusiasm builds now, yeah. because if it does, wow. Absolutely. Here's the extra point by Carroll is good. Garden City now leads 56 to six. Woo. Four plays, two minutes and six seconds, 24 yards. And Garden City now up by 50 <laughs> on Arkansas Baptist. Uh. 8.13 to go in the game. Good big win for Garden City. Uh, no score from Dodge yet. It was 30 to zero at halftime between Dodge City and Resolution Prep Academy. You know what, TD, I'd be remiss to, if I didn't say, you know, the support people for the athletic program have been just wonderful too. Absolutely. Um, you look at Ashley Rudy and what she does and great, great house. I mean, tremendous. And I know I'm forgetting other people that are as important as them, but 
And then I, I personally think we have our best SID in the conference with Michael. He's okay. Huh? He's okay. <laughs> I texted him the other day that uh, he's basically not busy right now. He's got <laughs> nothing going on. He said it's like a vacation. Yeah. Which is could not be further from the opposite. Oh, as, yeah. Uh, Football got moved to spring, and there's a million sports going on right now at Garden City. I mean, it's the reason I'm doing this game, and you're having to listen to my voice today, is because Mike Pillis off covering the Hutch basketball games tonight. As Garden City traveling to Hutchison, both men's and women's games can be heard right after this here on 99.9 The Rock. Here's a handoff up the middle, and stuffing it is Garden City. Defense all over that one. One of the tacklers there for the Bronc Busters, Tua Kimona Leota, six foot, 320 pound freshman for Garden City. No game on the plate, we'll bring a second out of 10. Andrews has had a rough day. Hands it off to Barnes right side. Barnes looking for the edge. He squirts forward for a couple yards, but just a couple will set up a third and long. I might mention that Larson is a redshirt freshman, so I believe he's got another year of eligibility. Yeah, well, this is a free yeah. year. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this could be a preview to fall. Imagine playing, what, eight games here in the spring and then 11-ish in the yeah. fall? Yeah, 19, 20 games in one season. Yeah, that's amazing. The turnaround and a Unique. to Barnes, and Barnes is taken down after a minimal gain, maybe a yard. Andre Barnes, the lonely touchdown for Arkansas Baptist here today. It was a touchdown reception. And Arkansas Baptist, after a three and out, will punt here. A lot of smiles on the Bronc Buster sideline. Coming up on the Robinson Furniture post game show. Hopefully we'll hear the thoughts from Tom Minnick if he remembers to come up. We don't have a sideline reporter. This is a short punt, not a great punt. Gets to about the 30 yard line and then dies on the 30. No return. So our Garden City's offense will take over. It's going to be a long 10-hour drive back to Arkansas Baptist. The last win over a Jayhawk Conference opponent was 2013. They won over Independence that day. It's been seven years, six months, and 20 days since that happened. Mike Irwin back at quarterback for Garden City. Six minutes to go in the game. Short field to work with, about 30 yards for Garden City. Here's the handoff. Up the middle, it's Jones. And Martez Jones with minimal gain. Martez Jones, 6'1", 200-pound sophomore out of Kirkwood, Missouri. Getting some carries when he's not long snapping for Garden City. Ball to 27, gain of about three or four. Snap to Irwin, handoff, Hodges on a sweet play, and it's wrapped up and taken care of in the backfield. Jordan Oglesby on the tackle for Arkansas Baptist. So a nice showing from the number five team in the country in Garden City. Yep. Up by 50 here with five minutes to go. I think it's what we kind of all expected would happen, being that, you know, Coach Mink does such a great job with recruiting and with coaching. It was big today to see the defense get, I mean, obviously the defense was so good here today, but to get see them get points on the board as well was huge. Yeah. 
This team was plus 11 in the turnover margin. In 2019, a pass incomplete intended for Jalen Williams. Four and a half minutes remaining. Again, Garden City taking on Fort Scott at 1 p.m. next week. Game could be heard right here on 99.9 The Rock. So we'll have that game for you again. With the crew intact. With the crew. Yes. Snap to Irwin. Drops back to pass. Now he's going to roll to his left. Scrambling, looking, looking. And he's going to get taken down for a loss of a couple on the play on the far side. He might have been better if he just threw it and tried to get an intercept it. That way they have poor field position. <laughs> Turnover on downs for Garden City. That's where Arkansas Baptist will take over with 4.15 to go in the game. At the... 33-yard line. At the end of three quarters, Dodge City on top of RPA College, 47 to zero. Ball in the far hash for Andrews. He turns around, hands it off to Goodall. Goodall wrapped up, taken out the line of scrimmage. Maybe a yard, maybe no gain there. I think Arkansas Baptist is just wanting to run that clock down and get out of here. By A.C. Omalo on the tackle. Long trek back Yep. for Arkansas Baptist over a 10-hour drive. It would be even longer if they don't take some of what has happened today and they learn from it, you know? Yes. And that's what the coach has got to sell. Long season if you don't put this one behind you and learn from it. Yep. Snap to Andrews in the shotgun. Facing some pressure, now throws at the far side. It's caught on the far side by Raylene Bell. Well short of a first down on the sideline. Third down and eight. Again, Garden City Bronkbuster basketball. To follow us here in a couple hours on 99.9 The Rock. Mike Pilisoff on the call. There's a ball that's through the hands. It looked like they were trying to set up a screen on that far side to Andrew Wilson. And it's incomplete fourth down. The problem with that is our pursuit is just so doggone fast. I mean, it's hard to set up anything with that. Punt teams will come out. And Yancey will punt again for Arkansas Baptist. 244 to play. Garden City up 56 to 6. They gonna run a fake here. <laughs> Did you notice that their their long snapper? He only has one arm. I did not notice that till now. Wow. Here's the snap. The kick is high and short. And it's going to take an Arkansas Baptist roll to about the 46 of Garden City. It is. Going to be Garden City basket, uh, football, excuse me. The 45. Well. Going forward, it's a Jayhawk Conference play now. Put up or shut up for the Garden City Bronkbusters. Yep. And as, Scott coming to town. As Coach Minnick said, I mean, it's like playing in the SEC. I mean, every week's going to be a grind. And Ask Butler about that. Yep. I mean, you got ind independence. Is, that's Jazz Dominguez who fumbles a snap and then gets taken down. Um talk about you know butler taking on independence to start the year and then have hutch next week 
Yeah. I mean, they actually could start off the season 0-2. Yeah. That's and a that's, big game. Yeah, that's not. But it's Butler, and if they get a win against Hutch next week, then we have an interesting yes. conference. Yes, yes. A lot is dependent on how tough was Coffeyville. Here's Dominguez to throw it on the far side. It's incomplete. Yeah, we'll find even Fort Scott Highland to yeah. Yeah. figure out how good those teams are. Highland yeah. taking on Fort Scott tomorrow, so we'll keep an eye on that game. Where's that game at? Is that, is that at Highland? At Highland. Boy, have they done a wonderful job revamping oh, their facility. Beautiful. Yes. Oh, man. We had the privilege of going there. In 2019. Yep. If you blink, you'll miss the town, but the football facilities. Just unbelievable. Yeah, just a great place to look at. Dominguez back to pass, throws it on a slant pattern, and it's caught. Caught over here by Jalen Williams, who's still on his feet and finally taken down at the 32-yard line. That was impressive. The Jazz Dominguez, Chamberlain, South Dakota, 6'2", 185-pound redshirt freshman. Jalen Williams, 6'6", freshman. Wide receiver. Oh, whoa. 6'6". Yes. Oh, no. And uh, that's a call us against Garden, I think. Unless the defense caused them to go offsides. Yeah, I think it was offsides. Now you got your you got your third quarterback in. You can't exactly tell him to take a knee here because you want to put some stuff on film yeah. for him, and you want him to get some playing time. Minute thirteen to go. Garden City up by fifty. It was Ar offsides on Arkansas Baptist, so Garden City football. Here's a handoff to Jones. Jones at the five. He's going to score. 27-yard touchdown for Martez Jones, who's originally the long snapper for Garden City. They have been having success with that inside option all day. And that was just another example of it. Carroll will attempt the extra point. Yes. Martez Jones, sophomore, getting into the end zone. Carroll's extra point, probably the best looking one of the day. Yeah. You know, 63 to 6, Garden City. CD, we were talking uh, before the game, and Coach Minnick was talking before the game that some of these kids, they go to Division I schools, and they don't even get taught what these kids are getting taught here. I thought that was interesting. Yeah. That is interesting. What a place to learn. Yep. And what a coaching staff to learn it from. Absolutely. So with 46 seconds to go, as the stands start to clear out. Barnes back to receive. Here's Carroll on the kick. This is a line drive again. Bounces at the 15 in the end zone and out of bounds. It looked like one of my drives in golf. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go. Again, stay tuned. Garden City Bronkbuster basketball, both women's and men's to follow. 
Women's starting at 5.30. Men's game will follow that here on 99.9 The Rock. And we'll have football again next week. Fort Scott's coming to town to take on the Bronx Busters as Garden City starts Jayhawk Conference play. After three quarters, Dodge City on top of RPA College right now, 47 to zero. Arkansas Baptist football, here's a snap by Andrews. Far side handoff, going nowhere, maybe a loss of a yard or two. And we got 30 se uh, seconds left to play. Coming up on the Robinson Furniture post game show, we'll take a look at the game recap. Also your post-game stats, and hopefully uh, talk to Coach Tom Minnick, if he remembers to come up. We'll hear his thoughts. That's going up here on the Robinson post-game show on 99.9 The Rock. This will be the final play of the game. It's a turnaround handoff to Barnes. Barnes on the far side is wrapped up and taken down out of bounds high. No flag flies. Probably should have been one. Yeah. And because it was out of bounds... Uh, there might have been a flag. I saw something there. There's, there'll be one more play after this because of the out-of-bounds play. Nope, they're going to wind it. And that's, that's your ball it. game. Garden City with a 63-6 to win over Arkansas Baptist. Garden City moves to 1-0 and on the season. Arkansas Baptist falls to 0-1. Well... John Ford, your final thoughts, I guess. Really, the defense came to play, but after a so-so first half by the Garden City offense, they really came through in the third quarter and uh, really got things going. Well, I think for a year now, we've been speculating on what kind of kids uh, Coach Minnick and his staff have brought in here. And uh, a little bit of disheartened by the fact that we didn't have a season in the fall, but Happy to know that we still maintain some of those kids that we had in the fall for the spring. And, you know, our our initial thoughts and speculation was that, hey, you know, Garden City's probably going to wax Arkansas Baptist. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah. And so, you know, you'd be disappointed if they didn't do that. So, I mean, I think they fit the billing. Now the question is, can they achieve consistency? And what's more important is can they improve? Because if they can improve and get better, that's going to bode well for their their, their run through the uh, Jayhawk Conference, which is not going to be easy. Absolutely. Big win for Garden City. Tom Minnick wins the season opener here at home, 63-6. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we will begin your Robinson Furniture postgame show. This has been Bronk Buster Football on 99.9 The Rock. With temperatures that have been so cold, Robinson Furniture in Garden City wants to warm things up so you can be ready for that spring furniture facelift at great savings. It's a store-wide sale. Everything will be marked on sale, and on top of that, we will warm things up even more with extended financing of up to 60 months with 0% interest. Right now, take advantage of in-stock mattresses that are ready for delivery or pickup. It's been a long, cold winter, so head to Robinson Furniture and warm your home up with new furniture. And thank you for shopping with us. 